Steve. All right, as the field is making their way onto pit road to check their pit road speed as a crew chief. What are you looking for on championship day? Well, when I talked to my driver earlier before he got in that last communication through the window net, you kind of get to look into his eyes and see his confidence level or his nerves. The same on pit road. I'm climbing off the pit box one more time, walking around, talking to each one of my crew members personally, direct, because in the end, they have to find a way to do it on their own. You can only do so much from on top of the pit box. You can communicate, you can plan, but these are all of those early mornings in the gym, all the early mornings in pit practice, all the late nights in the engineering room. This is when it all gets stacked together. So the field making their way off of pit road. We've talked so much about the fact that number one pit stall and advantage for William Byron. He has to just go a few feet before he gets to the line that tells where they will restart. As we look now at the race analysis, Steve, a short race, just 312 laps. Yeah, really a sprint. The first stage doesn't require a pit stop, only 60 laps long. The second stage at 125 laps, they will need a pit stop. Final stage, 127 laps, fuel window 90 to 94 laps. These Goodyear tires have good grip. They hold on pretty well, but new tires are an advantage. Gives the crew chiefs a lot of options. And for the championship four at the stage in during the regular season, they were worried about getting those stage points. The top 10 get them at the end of the each stage. Here it doesn't matter. Again, it is as simple as whichever championship four driver finishes in front of the other three, they have won the championship. But again, the nine previous years, the champion has had to win this race to win that title. And while there's a sentimental favorite with Kevin Harvick, who wouldn't want to see him go out on top? I still think it's those four. I think the championship four, they've proven to be the best. That's why they're in this situation. I think they are raced with a little more respect, and I think that makes it a little bit easier. But this moment for Kevin Harvick has to be emotional. What he's done in this sport, coming in in the manner in which he did, winning so many races, 10th all time. Um, this is a first ballot Hall of Famer we get to send off. All right, so we've talked a lot about the drivers, but Parker, these pit crews play a very instrumental role in who gets out front and could potentially win this race. Definitely, Rick, and you guys talked about the first pit stall and the advantage there. This 24 team told me it's worth a couple tenths of speed to be in that first pit stall, but also in their pocket, that 24 pit crew, the fastest pit crew in four tire stops in the 2023 season here in the NASCAR Cup Series. So for William Byron, he's got the best pit stall. He's got the fastest pit crew. If they can nail it, Marty, it could be looking at a very good day. So Parker, are these pit crew guys athletes? Absolutely. I wanted to introduce you to Calvin Teague, who is a rear tire changer for Kyle Larson and he injured his knee at Atlanta back in July. He was out eight weeks after knee surgery, came back for the first race of the playoff, did seven stops that day and they won the race. This pit crew is top three. They've been top three all year long, Dave. They could deliver Kyle Larson another championship like they did in 21. Marty, earlier this season, the crew, the crew for Christopher Bell was number one on pit road. That's why they were switched from a teammate that was not in the playoffs to Christopher Bell's race car. It has been less than 100% smooth since they got here, but they represent several sports backgrounds, football, baseball, basketball, and motocross. They know when it's game day. Today, they're going to bring it. Kim? Well, Dave, for Ryan Blaney's crew, I asked them what was their approach to this week preparing for this championship race, and they told me if you're going to win a championship, you have to be pitting like you want to win a championship each and every week of the playoffs. They feel like they've done that over the course of these 10 races. Specifically last week, they said nothing is going to be harder than what we did last week pit stop wise. It's the last race for Kevin Harvick. Here's his radio. Hey, Dad. I'm so proud of you. You've had a great career. Finish it off with one more. Good luck, Dad. Thank you, Piper. Keelan and Piper saying, Dad, good luck on your last race. It's time to find out who the champion of 2023 will be. William Byron, Mark Trex Jr. Green flag is in the air. Through one and two clean. And now the fight for second is on. Harvick on the inside. Martin Trex Jr. on the outside. As his first lap finishes, the nerves will settle in for the drivers. We heard Kyle Larson. He just wanted to know what he had in his race car. He's getting that right away as he makes a dive onto the flat. Three wide for second. Into turn one. 
He's trying to hug that yellow line up the racetrack. He goes. That makes Harvick have to go up a little bit higher than he wanted to. The five of Larson talked about that car being loose in practice on entry. Probably a little bit nervous about sending that car into the corner underneath the four for the first time. Learning about how this car can handle how much grip it has. They're doing that right now. Almost contact there, racing really close. It's door to door for second. Larson trying to take it away from Harvick. Harvick holding on to it right now. Yeah, you can see right now the racetrack is ready in that second lane. A lot of times this racetrack is too dirty to run up the high line, but right now it's ready to roll. Ryan Blaney back here in traffic. This is what he has to deal with. He has one of the championship fours, that 20 of Christopher Bell right in front. These are the two cars that I thought actually had the smoothest practice, but come qualifying time, they struggled the most. That's easy to recover as long as you're a little bit fortunate. You don't want one of these cars around you to have an issue. Slips up the track right there on entry just behind the 99 of Daniel Suarez. His teammate back there, Logano, trying to give him a little bit of room here to work. There you see Christopher Bell on the inside of Daniel down in the corner. Legato playing like a trapeze spotter back there, just making sure if anybody gets close, he can help protect. Rolls reversed from last year, right? Last year, Logano was racing for the championship, and Blaney played that role, trying to help Joey out. Multiple lines around this racetrack, and they're being searched out early. Blaney had a similar starting position last week at Martinsville. And over the period of the first run, drove through the top 10. Once this sort of settles out, this battle between Christopher Bell and the 99, I'm curious to see what the 12 can do. Still door to door as Bell trying to clear that 99, but can't do it. Now Blaney looks in between them. Christopher's clear. Will he drive up in front of the 99? He does. And now Suarez looks to the inside of Bell. All these drivers are going to run so many different lines. You see Bell sort of in the middle of the two cars in front of him, trying to find clean air for the nose of that car. Here he tries to run just slightly lower than the 17 in front of him. This racetrack provides so many lines for these drivers to be able to find that clean air and keep those cars working. On lap seven, we're already seeing drivers on the apron as well as drivers up Probably three, four lanes higher in turns one and two. Toyota on board of Christopher Bell giving us this view. Even though it is wide, Rick, it still is difficult to make the pass on the inside. We watched in the Xfinity race last night, a lot of cars running side by side and trying to make passes. They were hard to make. So as the drivers on the outside line, learn more about the outside line, more, learn more about its grip and gain more confidence, put more rubber down out there, I expect it to be even more difficult to make passes on the inside. Here Christopher Bell tries to get by Kyle Busch. Take that spot away. And you see the 41 of Priest jump to the outside of the 17 there. You're gonna see that a lot as this race goes on. Drivers trying to get on the right rear quarter panel. And he's gonna probably complete this pass. Priest into turn three and can't get down in front of that 17 of Busher. But now, yeah, but he'll be able to carry momentum on corner exit, Rick. That's that's really the advantage in running the top lane is that it's not about corner entry speed. It's about the speed you can carry through the middle and exit. And that's why it's so difficult making that pass on the bottom. You see right here, Kyle Busch right alongside Blaney will actually beat him down the front straightaway, carry a little more speed. It makes Blaney have to actually overdrive the corner, try to slide up in front of Bush. That's exactly what he did. So Blaney able to clear Bush there. And again, just in front of him is Christopher Bell. Bell made the comment earlier to us that just getting to this race was a very difficult task. Yeah, the challenge of reaching the championship four is a race in itself. To be able to execute three rounds of the playoffs, which are three races at a time, and then have the point reset where, you know, if you don't have the the regular season that you need, you, you go back below the cutoff line. So, you know, it really is a race in its own being trying to make the Final Four. And he's made it back-to-back -back years. He was here a year ago 
and wasn't able to close out the deal as Logano was able to win the championship last year. Dave. Rick, in the pre-race, you guys talked about how the car seemed to be the best in practice, but not, or one of the best in practice, but not that great in qualifying. Adam Stevens, the crew chief, was not concerned about that qualifying run because the practice was, in fact, so good. He said, we didn't change a spring on that car. That is the same four springs we had back at the shop when we were just thinking about what we thought would work well. So no concerns right now. Bell just radioed in just a little tight. That was on lap 11. Yeah, long race, 13 laps into this race, which is 312 total. Again, two stage breaks will be guaranteed cautions for them. But even under caution, you don't really get to catch your breath. Bell hugging that yellow line right next to the apron. Still can't clear that 17 of Busher. Bell fighting back here in the 13th position. Blaney just a spot behind him. The other two champ four drivers are up front. Byron running in the number one spot with Harvick running second. And Kyle Larson currently in third. William Byron leading the first laps here in this championship race at Phoenix Raceway. And family. You're watching NASCAR and NBC. It's still William Byron that is out in front. Joey Logano, last year's champion, currently in the 17th position back there in his Ford Mustang. We talked a lot about Bell trying to get by Busher. Well, Busher is really on the move as he moves up. Busher is running a 10th spot. Denny Hamlin with the Coke Zero. Sugar on board camera looking forward at Ross Chastain up there. Denny Hamlin running in the seventh spot trying to take sixth away from Chastain. I love when I see these two racing each other on the racetrack. <laughs> I know that, you know, they've had some run ins, but Denny's been complimentary of, of Ross at times in the media and on his own podcast. But still, we know that they want to best each other on the racetrack. So a lot of fun for us to be able to see on that. One car is right now driving away. Denny. Not a really good lap, this particular lap on the racetrack, probably gonna make some adjustments. Yeah, for these two drivers, I mean, obviously they came in this year hoping to be able to be in this championship race, but Denny Hamlin had the speed to get it done, had some bad luck, power steering issue, that really cost him. He ran well enough just to not have a clean last segment of, the, of, of these playoffs, and 
this guy right here also, Chris Busher, he he was great this year, a good year for RFK, and he has a fast race car. And their disappointment is real for not being in this championship battle, but you can you can make yourself feel a whole lot better by having a great day today. Yeah, the 17 car was kind of, you know, running pretty neutral lap times in the 41 that Priest had driven by. Now he's found something in this car. He's passing this 45 car Reddick, already passed the 54 Ty Gibbs. You see the other championship contenders behind him there. But this 17 moving forward, running some really good lap times, a couple kids faster than the cars around him. Steve, Chris Buescher really threw a manufacturer on his back this year. I know there was a lot of question if Ford could get out there and win races. Well, all of a sudden, Chris Buescher rattled off a couple wins, and everybody looked at him and went, well, okay, it must not be the manufacturer then because he's running really well. I think he put the other four teams on notice. There's a lot of whispers about maybe the power or maybe the bodies or the things that were holding that blue oval back. But then when RFK, specifically Buescher, came to life and did it in multiple different styles of racetracks. First, a short track of Richmond, a race that I thought his teammate and owner, Brad Kozlowski, had a chance to win. And then when the winning continued at a high-speed Michigan, that was it. That was the exclamation point that said, a blue oval can win anywhere. You wonder if that's why Blaney is ha here in the championship four and then topped it off with, hey, go to the World Center Racing. I mean, it's yeah. always fun to win at Daytona. And a one-two finish. He had Brad Keselowski uh, right behind him there, pushing him to the win. As a matter of fact, Brad Keselowski's back here, and congratulations to the Keselowski family as they just introduced a boy into their family yesterday. As a matter of fact, Brad Keselowski flew back home to the Charlotte, North Carolina area. Uh, wasn't there for qualifying here yesterday, but was there for the birth of his son and now is back behind the wheel of the six car today. Dave. There he is right there. Brett Kozlowski from 35th starting spot is up to 22nd, so he's making progress. He got here about 11 o'clock this morning, making sure that everything was good to go for him in the race car. Cole Custer actually qualified at the 31st, and the team told me that was just fine. We just need to make sure everything was okay. Brad just radioed the crew. Car is very good. He might have a fun day out here, the new dad. <laughs> and Dave, remember when you talk about uh, Cole Custer, you have to refer to him as Xfinity Series champion now. Uh, that's who qualified the car for Brad Keselowski yesterday, and he won the Xfinity Series championship last night right here on this track. William Byron still out front. He has a 1.2 second lead now, Parker. Right, Rick, and he and Kevin Harvick have been training fastest laps back and forth, but William's team asked him before this race to give them reads on the race car. Sometimes he can go silent. They said, we need a lot of reads, and just a couple laps ago, he had this to say on the radio. Um, entry to one, but pretty good everywhere, I think. Fly me with the rears. Not really loose, more fly me. The four has moved up in one and two, just in, moved up both ends. And that sliminess has developed into being free on the entry and free on the exit. The team continues to update him on the line that Harvick's been running on the higher side as he tries to drive away from that four car right now, Marty. Kevin Harvick in second right now, Parker, in his final full-time Cup Series start. You know, he admitted I haven't really shown much emotion until this week, and I asked Rodney Childers about that, and he said that emotion came out Monday night in a team dinner. Childers told me that Harvick got about one sentence into his team speech and started crying. Rodney said they all looked at each other. We'd never seen them have emotion like this. We didn't know how to react, but that shows you how much his race team means to him. Jeff, you've been through this before. What was that final start like for you? What's the emotion on this day? Hey, knowing I'm not going to be in a cup car anymore. You put your whole life into it, Marty. You grew up as a kid dreaming to be able to drive a race car, and you've had the unbelievable opportunity to do it. And it's hard to imagine a life without it. And as you get closer, the reality of that starts stepping up into your brain. Like, what am I going to do next? What hole is going to be left inside of me when, when I don't have this anymore? And it is a scary situation for a race car driver, especially someone like Kevin Harvick that has put so much into it. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely emotional, but I'll tell you right now, 32 laps into the, race, into the race, he's thinking about being a race car driver. He sees that he's competitive to this 24. He's matching lap times with the leaders. He's at one of his best racetracks. So he's gaining confidence in a season where they've not had a lot to be confident about. He is gaining confidence in this race car and we'll start to consider like what really could happen today. This might be a race where they could go out there and contend for the win. At the very least, 
continue that streak of 20 record straight top tens at this racetrack. Yeah, Harvick, he has a cup, yeah, that cup record of 20 straight, man. That is that is hard to imagine. And Hunt Brothers Pizza has been with him for a lot of those years where he's finished in that top 10 position. William Byron right now leading the field still here at Phoenix. NASCAR Cup Series Championship is brought to you by Progressive, the Ease to Progress program, providing cars to veterans in need. Coke Zero Sugar, is it the best Coke ever? And by Novartis. Well, Sundays are for taking it easy and NASCAR. Bud Light's make it both easier to enjoy by giving you the chance to win a year's worth of beer. Scan that QR code on your screen to enter. A sold out crowd here at Phoenix Raceway. There are 10,000 camping stalls and spots. Those were filled up on Monday, and it has been sold out since the summer as far as this championship race to find out who will win the title. As we see, Ross Chastain has made his way by Martin Trex Jr. And so Chastain up into the top five. Martin Trex Jr., after starting on the front row, has fallen back to sixth. Bubba Wallace also having a good run right now running in the third spot behind Kevin Harvick and of course Byron still out front by 1.1 seconds. Looking over to the leaderboard you'll see that Bubba Wallace has made his way around Kyle Larson for third position. Let's take a look at that replay. I saw the lap time on the five very very slow. Here he is way up the racetrack. 23 to the inside down the front straightaway. Bubba Wallace said good speed he's matching the leaders. Down into turns one and two. Five cars still at the top of the racetrack. Bubba's going to clear him right here. So oh. I'm wondering if the balance, you know, the five car of Larson was the only driver that we really ever heard comment about the balance of his race car in practice. And so I wonder how this five car is driving and if, if Larson wants some improvements, Marty. So Dell Jr., he was concerned about the car being too free. It is too free here in the race as well, especially in turns three and four. In fact, a moment ago, he said, I just have absolutely no grip. And Steve, the quote from Cliff Daniels was, I can see that you're turning right in turns three and four. We'll have an adjustment for that. Turning right in a left-hand corner, not a good thing, is it, Steve? It's not a good thing, but what has definitely changed in racing is that Cliff can see it. He's looking at data real live driver inputs. I think that has changed the dynamic and the relationship of driver crew chief. Now you don't have to ask the driver every single question. Look at the data 
and then point your questions in the direction of what you see you're being beat by or what you need as now the five under attack from the one of Ross Chastain. Yeah, you two have had an eventful year. You mentioned yeah. Denny Hamlin and Ross Chastain. Well, Kyle Larson and Ross Chastain as well, all the way back to Darlington. Yeah, the one car goes by relatively easy on the bottom, and here's the 19 of Tricks as well at the top of the picture. Now the bottom of the picture trying to close in on the five as well. If you're Larson, your challenge right now is to recognize that there are no stage breaks. You're not racing for stage points. This is a race to lap 312. And you know that the key to winning this race is being in position. And so what the game is right now, Steve, is to keep communicating, keep telling your crew chief, he can see it, but what exactly am I dealing with? And keep making charges, changes to the car so it's better when it needs to be. Many times the worst run of the day is this one, the first one. The track is super slick. Do not panic at this point, Kim. And Ryan Blaney currently running in the 11th position. He had a fast car in practice, bad on the loose condition in practice. That's continued today. In fact, lap 13 said, I am loose in, loose off. Let's fast forward. What is he saying now about his car? Take a listen. I just, I have no hurry up, no speed. I believe it's starting to get tight through the middle here, one and two, but my entry is so loose, my exits are so loose. Front's starting to chatter, but I just need to be tightened up. So despite that loose condition, still finding speed on the racetrack, I'm gonna throw it to you guys. Do you get a sense of panic in Blaney's voice? Well, I'll tell you right now, when you look at the speed, he just ran the second fastest lap on the track. I know that he probably doesn't know that, uh, but his, he may, I mean, the car drives badly, but I would tell him, look, the laps are competitive. I know you're not happy about the balance. I know you think you're losing tons of time because of how badly you think the car drives, but you're not. The lap times are good. We'll make the adjustments. Hang in there and finish this out. And I'm attacking the entry first. I don't want, in the most pressure-packed race of your career, you chasing the back of the car every time you enter the corner. Because if, Dale, if I get a little better on entry, you're going to have to help me. You're going to have to put the car in the right position for the other two-thirds of the corner. Championship four right now. It's Byron out in front. Larson's running fifth. Christopher Bell is ninth. And Blaney back in 11th.
four drivers fighting for a championship here at Phoenix Raceway. Byron, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, and Ryan Blaney again. The one that finishes in front of the other three will be the champion at the end of this race. And Byron has hold his spot up top. Bell and Blaney, they've been moving forward. But Marty Larson, he's the one who's dropped back a couple spots since the start. Going the other direction. Is the handling any better on the five car? Listen in. Yeah, just no grip. In or off. Yeah, it's it for tight more than anything, right? No, I'm going to spin out. On entry. I'm more worried about exit, probably, but entry sucks too. Way too free for Kyle Larson with temperatures in the 90s, Junior. I don't think that's helping that free condition for Kyle Larson either. I will say they're, I'm glad that they did not have a misunderstanding and him get adjustments under the pit stop to loosen the car up more. That would have been a really big difficult situation to be in the next run on tires. So good to get that communication out of the way, but hopefully they can make the adjustments to help Larson. Kevin Harvick right now, he is coming. He has got the bottom of the racetrack working. William Byron trying to use the top. Everybody is slipping and sliding. Nobody has their car driving the way they want it to be. That's right up Kevin Harvick's alley. That's why he, that's where he's been so good his entire career. Places where it gets slick. Car slides around a lot, tires wear out. Under five laps, now four to go in stage one, and the gap went from 1.2 seconds to two seconds, or 0.2 seconds. And so Harvick has definitely closed the gap. Byron has been, been putting cars a lap down all the way to 28th, so Todd Gilliland currently on the lead lap. But William Byron looking very strong, but now for the first time, Parker under attack. As he tries to hold off Kevin Harvick here, what you heard about the five car is similar to what's happening to William Byron inside that 24. They told him to manage the build for the right rear, but it's continually built looser. And he used the word hovering in the rear as he goes to the corner. That is an uncomfortable feeling for a race car driver trying to lead a race here at Phoenix. That just means that rear end is not in the racetrack the way he wants. He tries to hold off this four car to end the stage one. Got a lot of traffic in front of the leader Byron and also creeping into this battle for the lead is the one car of Chastain back there at the top of the screen making a lot of great lap time just two laps to go in stage one William Byron in the spring led 64 laps in his win here he ran top five all but three laps we'll see if he can keep that up as now the four gets to his inside for the lead Kevin Harvey has just been working the bottom of the racetrack he makes good time on corner entry he's able to really roll right here the lap car is up in the top groove in front of the 24. That takes away a little grip in three and four. Byron pulls back ahead down the front straightaway. Now the final lap of stage one. And Harvick again hugging the, that yellow line. Again to the top of the racetrack, Rick. That lap traffic's giving it, making it a little difficult on the 24, but he clears again. It's Todd Gilliland just in front of the 24. Both go down to the yellow line through three and four. And William Byron is going to come out of four, and he will win stage one. Ross Chastain, big fight there at the end as Harvey gets second, but Chastain right on his back bumper. Bubba Wallace, Kyle Larson in the top five. Truex Jr., Busher, Eric Jones, Bell, and Blaney all finishing up in the top 10 at the end of stage one. So Byron gets the first win of the day. He wins stage one.
NBC Sports coverage of the NASCAR Cup Series Championship is brought to you by Pods. Save up to 25% at Pods.com during Pods Holiday Sale. And by Applebee's. Vets and active military eat free this Veterans Day. Pretty close call for the five of Kyle Larson at the end of stage one. Take a look at this. It's three wide and Cindric almost sliding into the door of Larson. Yeah, there were two cars on the outside of Larson that had been battling for the free pass. JJ Yaley actually beat Cindric back to the line to be able to get the free pass. And I believe those two are arguing about how they got raced on those final couple corners. First time down pit road today, Steve. Ten speeding penalties here in March. Yeah, the longest pit road in the whole circuit. I mean, look at it. They enter off turn two. They don't exit until off turn four. They run nearly a half a lap on pit road, Kim. And for Ryan Blaney, we heard it. No rear grip. He said the entry is really bad. He's looser into three than into one, but similar problem both ends. Crew chief Jonathan Hassler said, we'll tighten you up, maybe a one change. And he said, probably needs more than that, but we can start there, Dave. Tire carrier Jake Holmes has a wrench in his teeth. That'll adjust the chassis. Air pressure as well loose in, Marty. So Kyle Larson wound up falling back to fifth, Dave, and he said it actually wasn't terrible at the end of the run, but he said, quote, when the track has speed, I can't take advantage of it. You need to help my exit, Parker. Marty, William Byron at the bottom right of your screen gets into his pit stall fine here. He was building loose as well on the entry and the exit of the quarters. Thank you for getting your tires and fuel. And that 24 team will end ball first pit road. Stall very important as we see the top three holding their spots. Larson gained one on pit road as did Busher. Well, the past five years, the championship has been settled right here at Phoenix Raceway. It is life changing for these drivers once they get out front and able to claim that title. It is something they will never forget. And a year ago it was Legato. Who will it be this year? NASCAR Fantasy Live lets you keep tabs on your fantasy lineup throughout the race and allows you to adjust your picks until the end of stage two. Visit NASCAR.com slash fantasy or you can select the fantasy icon on the mobile app leaderboard to make in-race changes. Well, we're very lucky to have Parker Kligerman as a part of our broadcast team because just yesterday, Parker, you were out here on this racetrack fighting for positions in the Xfinity Series. Yes, Rick, and one of the things you will see on each and every restart here at Phoenix is these drivers cutting the dog leg behind me. Now, there is nothing that can prepare you for how violent a moment that is in the race car. Yesterday in the race car, multiple times, my head 
felt like it was going to be, but my helmet was actually bouncing on my head. Your head will knock between the headrests as you go through there. And the earlier you turn down from the start finish line, the more violent it is. And then you have to rejoin the track, guys. It's incredibly tough as these drivers go through there. And you just nothing will prepare you for that moment you hit into the ground for the banking. It's intense, Junior. Yeah, we're watching right on board with the drivers as they're going through this process. The other thing that it presents is down into turn one, there's so many cars that are in different groups. What group is yours? What group can you take? Do you want to take? And are you clear to move about, right? Are you going to get clipped by a car going high or low? We see contact almost every single restart getting down into turn one. But the traditional line through one and two tends to prevail off of turn two. That's really where things sort themselves out. The drivers that go to the bottom, they're taking a gamble that it's going to work. But often they lose a lot of momentum on corner exits. So trying to run that traditional line and not get taken advantage of late in the race will be key. Interesting mix here on the front row. You have Kevin Harvick, who was a 2014 champion, alongside of 25-year-old William Byron going for his first championship. Harvick with nine wins on this racetrack. And you have to remember, William Byron won in the spring here on this racetrack. We'll see if he can hold on to the lead as we get underway with stage two. Another great restart. It's the one now of Ross Chastain fighting for the second spot with Harvick. Tucks in behind him as they go into turn three. See a big wiggle, a big aggressive move out of the 20 of Christopher Bell. Ryan Blaney gained a couple on pit road, and here he is inside the top 10. Bell as well with the pit cycle running eighth. We're seeing Bubba Wallace in the 23 there, fighting for a spot with the five of Larson. Looks two inches apart. Trying to settle it for the fourth spot. Blaney coming into the picture as well. There you see Bell, the inside of Busher. Hamlet watches his teammate from Joe Gibbs Racing, Martin Trex Jr., skirt in front of him. Blaney on the outside of Bubba Wallace right here, trying to take this spot away. Bubba's going to lift and give it to him, and then put himself on the outside of his teammate. Bubba right here, who was running up in the top three, losing a couple spots right here. And it's a situation that's difficult for these non-playoff drivers when they are getting raced by those drivers trying to win a championship. How hard do you race them? Probably not too early at this stage in the race. That may change later. So far, the stuff that the championship four have been bunched up as far as the field, because now the furthest back is Bell running in the sixth spot. Byron up front, Larson running fourth, Blaney is fifth, and Bell is sixth. Well, it's Very close right there. there. Yeah. Truex on the inside of the 17. Little wiggle out of Christopher Bell here. Yeah, it gets really tight off of turn two. Just had to make an extremely aggressive move to try to get underneath Busher, and when he did, look at the rear tires. Actually left a little rubber on the racetrack. The car almost spun to the right. When he makes this move, the car almost spins to the right. Very reminiscent of how cars drove it down the back straightaway at Rockingham and worn out racetracks, but look at him. Had to live about wrecked that race car right there, and I bet that surprised him. You don't make those type of moves often. You don't really know how the car is going to unload. Almost spun out there, Dave. No comment from the very flat line, Christopher Bell. He is just still in the gas, as you can see. And one of the reasons why he wanted to make that aggressive move on the 17 was how long it took to pass Chris Busher in stage one. I mean, it was laps before he got around the 17. I believe that adjustment helped the 20 car, and he wanted to dispose of the 17 right away. One of the things I think that creates that situation is probably just on those sticker tires, Latart, is that air pressure in the left rear being so low, there's really no grip in that left rear tire trying to turn the car right. Not a lot of grip, but you got to be careful because it's not meant to be loaded that way. So it sounds crazy, but if you get that thing turned far enough back to the right, you can damage that left rear tire for the rest of the run. Also, guys, on this beginning of this short run right here, everybody's just locked on the bottom of the racetrack. It shows you that right now the racetrack still wants to be on the bottom, the shortest way around on new tires. Which one of these guys would be the first one to move up? Try something different. Track just goes through changes as the run goes on and as the tires wear out. 
you cannot do the same thing with your car. That's why the top becomes good. You don't have to ask as much out of it. You don't have to turn the wheel as much. You don't have to drive it in the corners deep. Kim, how about Blaney running in fifth right now? Yeah, Blaney cracking the top five. That was after a great start restart, but also a great pit stop. And the captain, Roger Penske, took notice. Take a listen. Brown, you're doing a great job there. Everybody was cars at that time, but good job down here. And we know the phrase Penske perfect. That's what the captain is looking for today. Ryan looking to give Roger Penske his first back-to-back -back NASCAR Cup Series championships. We saw Blaney use the top of one and two down there, guys. Jeff, you mentioned who would go up there first. He ran the top in one and two. I thought it looked great. Let's see what he does again. Now back to the bottom of the racetrack. And he actually puts his left sides under this yellow line. There's a little bit of decambered in the apron. It actually turns the car, kind of de-wedges the car, takes cross out of the car when you put the left front on there. So he's helping the car turn through the middle of the corner. You cannot use the apron in three and four. The, it's too aggressive of a change so you won't see the cars use it down there. You know, we talk about Kevin Harvick and the influence he's had on racing. This is one of them. One of the first people I saw ever run the entire apron of three and four was Kevin Harvick. All four tires below that yellow line. Interesting to hear the captain, Roger Penske, talking about how good Ryan Blaney is doing and the team. That's kind of what Ryan Blaney was thinking before this weekend started when we heard it. Everyone's just kind of in sync right now. You know, everyone's executing really well, you know, on and off the racetrack. Um, and that's that's hard to find. You know, it's hard to find everything kind of in motion together, you know, and everything going your way and everyone working together really well and, and things are piecing together. It's really hard to get, uh, but we're doing it at the perfect time right now. So I, I think peaking at the right time is really important in sports. You see it all over sports. Um, you know, teams peak at the right time, end up winning titles. Ryan Blaney won one week ago at Martinsville to lock himself into this championship four, so he has the momentum. He has the momentum on the top of that racetrack, too. I'm not sure about this turn here, but the last couple of corners, the top has been really good as he closes in on the five. Larson sees that as well. He sticks to the bottom of the racetrack. Blaney's still to the top. Here comes the 20 of Christopher Bell closing in on the back bumper of that 12. Not quite as a good corner there for the 12 to be able to create momentum and speed down the front straightaway. And again, you see the championship four drivers right there, three of them, Larson, Blaney, and Bell, nose to tail as they're running fourth, fifth, and sixth here. And Steve, this stage, we're going to see potentially green flag pit stops. They can't go from the start of this stage to the end. No, I think they're going to split up kind of right in the middle. Uh, in the spring, they pitted around lap 119, 120. I would expect the same today. And the question is, how do you adjust in your car? And it's the story of kind of what you feel like you have. For the 24, it's very difficult. He's led every lap. So how is he going to work on his car? You see the worst two early in the race, the 12 and the 20. They've made adjustments. The five is the one I'm very interested in. They were a little snippy on the radio, a little unsure of what to adjust. They've made a set of adjustments. Now when he looks in his mirror, it's not just two cars behind him, but two championship four cars behind him. That's going to close that vice, Marty. The pressure's going to build from Kyle Larson. Exits much better for Kyle Larson, Steve, but Cliff Daniels told him don't overcook the entry into turn one and then gave him this advice on the radio. Some guys are using just a little bit of left front on the apron to turn their cars in one and two. Don't know if that'll help you, just info. So earlier, Junior Steve talked about all the information available to the crew chiefs. Do you want that much information as a driver? Absolutely. I want to know where everybody's running and how they're making speed. And this track has so many, it's a variety of ways to go through the corner here, particularly down here in one and two. So tell me, are they using a little bit of apron? Are they putting all four tires on the apron? Are they running the fence? Are they running the high side, such as this 12 car here, Blaney, who's trying to make the pass? Let me know where they're making time. I'll go try it. I'll go try and see if I can make my car work there as well. Larson running in the fourth spot. Byron has been dominant to start this race. He has already been out front 85 laps. That puts him over 1,000 laps led this season.
Saturday in Columbus, the Ohio State Buckeyes look to stay undefeated. Well, they host the Michigan State Spartans at the Horseshoe. Big Ten football on NBC and Peacock. Here comes Saturday night. It's Sunday afternoon racing and the championship race in front of us as we see William Byron out in front, but it's been tight between Larson, Bell, and Blaney. They have been running fourth, fifth, and sixth since yep. the second stage started. Blaney's lost a little bit of ground to these two, but now Bell's trying to get around the five of Larson. He's having to use the bottom of the racetrack. Larson has learned a little bit by watching these two. He's going to the top of the track. It's a bit of a defensive move. He's trying to find speed as well in the car, but he's getting a hassle from the 20 car. Watch the strength of the 20 car. Watch out where he gains ground. It's right in the middle of the corner. He's able to really get his car to turn. And now go back to the throttle. He's going should get alongside Larson here. Almost got there. Still looking at him, trying to show he wants the inside. Now you got to be precise. You got to hit your marks perfectly, not overdrive the corner entry if you're Bell. Bell's trying to take fourth away from Larson, not able to complete the pass there as we're seeing it heat up up front. Here comes Harvick. Harvick's been working the top of the racetrack, Rick. He's got good speed. He's going to be able to get alongside the 24 down the back straightaway. Byron allows this to happen. By Byron sees this coming. He's like, man, I'm not going to drive hard trying to keep you behind me. I'll let you go. Maybe he learned something from this four car watching Harvick run around this racetrack. He's so, he's so good here. I would get behind this guy, see what he's doing, how he's making time. Yeah, if I'm Rudy Fugel, that's the instructions I'm giving him. I know we're racing the 5, the 20, the 12, but we've led every lap, 92 laps. Let's settle in behind the 4. I think he's a little better. The 1 might even be a little better than us. Let's figure out where. Give me some feedback on what you think we need with our car. The other three of the championship four are going to continue to improve. we got to start adjusting on it. Hey, the last time Harvick finished outside the top 10, None of the champ four drivers had even started a cup race. <laughs> so if right. you want to follow someone that knows how to get around here, there's your guy. Yeah. 20 straight top 10 finishes for Kevin Harvick as now he is leading at Phoenix. Marty. In his final full-time Cup Series race leading at Phoenix, one of his home race tracks, you guys mentioned the nine wins here, so he certainly knows what to do with the race car. And the car is better for Kevin Harvick as well. He gave Rodney Childress some very clear direction on where he wanted to go with the race car. And I think the further he runs up front, the longer he runs up front, Parker, the more confidence Kevin Harvick gets. Who knows, he might win this final race. He does look good, Marty, but for William Byron, that 24 car, he started off this run saying, it started freer than the run prior. But under that stage break there, you guys referenced the line that Kevin Harvick is running. Take a listen to what they had to say on the radio about Kevin's line at the end of last stage. So when you guys said he was around the bottom, was he running under the line or, or running on the line? When he was around the bottom, he was running the line. He was not under. Okay, got it. Yep. And that sort of theme has consisted throughout this race in telling them about the four and where he is running, as you referenced now. Once the four went by, they went to the top. Ooh, tight battle here, guys. Yeah, the 12 of Ryan Blaney has really looked like he'd been shot out of a rocket here. It's unbelievable what he just did. He went from being about a second behind these two to going right by him three wide. And so Blaney now has the advantage over the other two. Yeah, he sat back there and watched his 20 and his five battle. He's able to regroup. Caught them in a situation down in turn one and two. Was able to go underneath and buy them both. Now the 17 of Chris Busher has closed in, taking another position away from the five of Larson. Larson just a little bit off today, just a little bit struggle in the balance of this race car. Can they make the adjustments on pit road to help this five out? So Busher has made his way up to the sixth spot, and now Blaney looks like one of the fastest cars on the racetrack, Kim. Yeah, Blaney able to make passes, and he had a little bit of motivation. He lost the spot before he was able to get past those guys. Listen to what he said on the radio. All good here. One lap at a time. They did tell Blaney to calm down. We talk about Ryan Blaney having a short fuse. Sometimes that works against you. Sometimes, again, it's motivation, perhaps motivation in this case. <laughs> this may have been what he was talking about. Uh, the frustrations coming out of the radio for Blaney. Well, the drivers have learned a great skill. This is just short track racing right here. There's nothing unusual about that whatsoever. But the drivers have learned the skill 
of putting their car where others want to go. Take their line away from them. Take the air away from them. They call it air blocking, and that's what he was upset about. Yeah, the cars depend on so much downforce underneath in the underbody area. So when you drive across the nose of a car, it just takes away tons of downforce all at once. So it is a defense tactic to try to keep a car behind you. But on the long run, this 12 cars look good in practice. It's looking good right now. The five concerns me a little bit as the, as the run gets longer. He's losing more and more time to, to the cars around him. And Chris now, well, if we look at up front, Harvick and Chastain are running one and two. Byron, Blaney, and Bell now are third, fourth, and fifth. So this is the closest that any of the championship four contenders have been to Byron this early in the race. What I, what I love about this race, Steve, is that we have a situation where you can take off fast with your race car, have a ton of speed, it might cost you later in the long run. We have cars that have long run speed, we have cars that run have short run speed. Yeah, and now the question is, how's the race going to fall and what do you want to have? How are you going to adjust it? Long run so far, but if we get the short sprints at the finish, who will overcome? Now, last week at Martinsville, the strength of the 12 was the long run, and we finished with an extended 160 lap run at Martinsville, and Blaney made them pay. The question is, what will we have today as we see Bell still kind of stuck behind the second? Hot, buddy. There you go, brakes are hot, you hear the information. Yeah, he got right up to the back bumper of that 17 of Chris Busher. And Busher even was a little bit loose. So Steve, probably 15 laps Starting away, maybe a from- bit free in that same spot. The adjustment was really good though. He liked the adjustment he had to say. Yeah, about 14 or 15 laps for a pit stop. We see Blaney, that long run car is now easily closed in on the back of William Byron. I don't think William Byron has much to defend with here. So trying to take the top spot of the championship four as we look on from the advanced auto parts on board of Ryan Blaney. Can Blaney be the first one to move in front of Byron? Take your time with him. Roger Penske giving him a little advice. Well, I, I don't think he's going to have to take his time. I think the 12 just has way more rear security than the 24. He can attack the corner. He can power up better from the bottom. Byron's going to run side by side, but I think it's only a matter of time now for the 12 to be able to roll past the 24. Heard Blaney get frustrated with the other two champ four contenders. Now, will he be frustrated with Byron? Remember, William Byron started worse than all of the championship four, started in 15th after qualifying. And, sorry, Blaney. And this is what we've seen lately from this guy. He has had good long run speed the last two weeks. He's got it again today. But he just can't clear that 24 right now. Both of them running very high. That's what makes this racetrack amazing. On old tires, drivers running different lines, especially using that high line at this racetrack. Now I think the 12's in a great spot. It's gonna drive up the racetrack. Nothing Byron can do about that. And Byron and that Exalta on board looks as Blaney has now taken the spot as far as the championship four. Remember, whichever driver finishes in front of the other three competitors is the champion. Blaney now on point of those four.
And the first of the championship four to be eliminated is going to be Christopher Bell. As he got into the wall, he's been talking about brake problems. So you're, we're on board, you can hear it. As soon as he touches the brake pedal, the right front rotor explodes. There. It looks like it's a flat because in the end, it is a flat tire. The rotor goes through the wheel, the tire goes down, the 20 of Christopher Bell has no option but straight into the wall. We heard him complaining about brakes. The radio you heard was the crew chief coming back saying, hey, it's all on you. There's no more cooling available. And you see right here, parts and pieces of the brakes coming off. Heavy damage day over, and then right here, look, this is important, because see where that spark is? That's basically contact between the wheel and the caliper. Dave. Yeah, Steve's right on the broadcast. We heard him say the brakes are too hot, and then he radioed back to crew chief Adam Stevens, I'm going to need brake help. And that's when Adam told him, I believe that was uh, not on the air, that you have all the cooling you're gonna get, the brake ducts are open, and he said it was on him. Unfortunately, it was close after that that Christopher Bell had the problem with the brake rotor, and they radioed to him that he's done. But right now, just sitting on pit road, they wanted to put a tire on it so he could roll away. Okay, I can't imagine what he's thinking as he sits there, right? For the second year in a row, he's made it to the championship four. Now the opportunity taken away with a mechanical. Field on its way to their pit crew, Kim. And that run much better for Ryan Blaney. He said, I fired off decent. I had more rear grip. The rotation through the center is still pretty good. We are definitely moving in the right direction on this car. He told his team, four fresh Goodyear tires. So no, go fuel, Marty. Kevin Harvick gets for the lead here at Phoenix in his final full-time Cup Series start to the car was just a little bit too free. They're going to make a small adjustment to tighten him up. Kyle Larson, who fell back to seventh, said his entry was way better. In fact, it was great, he said. It just won't turn the center now. They're going to free him up just a little bit, Parker. And after leading 92 last William Byron hit from the fourth position, the bottom right of your screen. He talked about the Carters getting super loose on him and losing the speed in traffic because he'll be in the top five on exit and pit road. Pretty good stop for William Byron, Busher, Larson, all gaining a spot. But the first of the championship four to be eliminated is going to be the 20 of Christopher Bell. The brakes explode on the right front, and Bell's championship hopes go up in fire.
Things got a little too warm for Christopher Bell uh, here in the desert as he has a mechanical failure. Steve, take us through, explain what just happened there with Christopher Bell. Well, let's take a look at our vir Toyota virtual car. We have seen this at tracks like Phoenix. We saw it at St. Louis. So this is the braking uh, setup on the next gen car. You see the brake rotor, you see the red AP caliper. Those are spec. The green thing, the pad right there, those are optional. You can run different pads. The most important thing, these wheels are so big, we've taken the space up with brakes. Very little clearance between the brakes and the wheel itself. How are they cooled? We heard Christopher Bell say, help me with cooling. Well, it's ducks in the front. You can't add tape. Now, the 20, he had no tape. He was wide open, according to the crew chief, and what the pictures look like, that feeds air back here to the brakes. So whether you don't have enough cooling, or what I think in Bell's part, you're just using the brakes too much, you actually can get this rotor. It goes from metal to red hot to white hot, and when you clamp it, it grows in diameter, and it contacts the caliper, and when that happens, it's literally an explosion. This rotor explodes when he steps on the brake pedal like that. It goes through the wheel, the tire goes down, a flat right front tire for Christopher Bell. Championship hopes over. And you see this car blow the right front tire, and I think that he took the car up the racetrack into the wall. We're watching the steering wheel here, but when it blows, he doesn't drive across, down across the racetrack to, so that the impact with the wall will be at a massive angle. It actually allows the car to get into the wall as soon as possible to lessen that contact and lessen the impact for the driver. A lot of things we're seeing these drivers do, but great description from Letard on how that rotor can explode and fly apart. It not only is detrimental to the car where the rotor exploded, but all the cars around him. They go, parts go through the grills, parts flatten other tires of the other cars, so there's things to be concerned about. And during that pit stop, Blaney did not have a good stop. Problem on the left front went from third to seventh. Two by two once again. Carly and Chastain up front. Byron, the furthest forward of the championship four, running in the fourth position now. You see him fighting to the inside here for that second spot. What a mess it is back there in row five and on back. Four wide, five wide, six wide. Insane. And the restarts just get crazier as the race goes on with more on the line. Oh, contact right there to 44. Priest is up to track his teammate. Briscoe gets into his left rear quarter panel. How are they going to blend in with all these cars? It's going to be difficult in turn three. Making it out of there. Now they're going to go into turn one. See how this works out. Four wide. Everyone jockeying for positions here from 15th on back. And with Chastain leading Harvick second, Busher third, this championship race already has a different feel. You mentioned at the start of the show, Rick, nine, nine years, the champion has been the winner. And I know this is far from over, but I can't really remember a championship race where they weren't one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. They really dominated the lap sled. An interesting one of the competitors out early with Christopher Bell and the mechanical issues he has had to deal with as we see Byron trying to get by the 17 of Busher, trying to get that third spot back. But it's Chastain now leading in front of Harvick by just about a half a second. Martin Trex Jr. in the 19, the regular season champion, eliminated from the playoffs earlier than he was hoping. Wanted to get to the championship four, but wasn't able to make it out of the round of eight. I think the best three cars are in front of the field right now. The 17 of Busher, Harvick, and Chastain have shown me as they've drove through the field that they can pass. They have great short run speed and long run speed. And now that means that your championship contenders are always going to be dealing with dirty air all day long. One will not have the advantage, at least now, of clean air as we go throughout the rest of this run. Ross Chastain a year ago with the incredible move at Martinsville to get into the championship four. Not as lucky this year. Ross Chastain was eliminated in the round of 12. He was able to win this year earlier at his home track in Nashville, at least the team's home track. And now out in front here by half a second over Harvick. Parker.
Right, Rick, and as we see that one car lead right now, I think we saw the signs of this earlier in the race at the end of stage one. He actually was catching Kevin Harvick and William Byron were leading really fast towards the end of that stage. And then stage two came on the radio and said the drive off in this car is amazing, meaning you just able to plant that front on the exit. So you're starting to see the strength of that one car. Remember, although we're talking about the championship before, a lot of these teams fighting for different points positions, that one team came in here in a tight battle from eighth to 12th in points. And with the day they're having right now, they could rocket themselves eighth in the points, which would be a great accomplishment for this one car in this season to top it off with a great points finish this year. Parker, he put together a really dominant performance in Nashville earlier, led 99 laps on his way to that win. But it probably was a little bit of a disappointing year compared to the previous year when he was in victory lane multiple times. Nashville, his first win in 2023, but looking very strong to finish out the season here. Currently, you heard that battle he was in ninth, currently sitting in ninth. So kind of the front end of that window, that opportunity for Ross Chastain. A lot of financial benefits for Trackhouse. Um, a lot goes along with those points from fifth to 16th. Justin Martin's pit bull. The primaries, as far as the track house, Pitbull just put out, just dropped his most recent album that was titled Track House. So a uh, conglomeration there of entertainment, racing, and the music world coming together as we ride along in the advanced auto parts onboard camera of Ryan Blaney. He chases down the five of Larson. Yeah, he's moved his high side here, trying to make something work up here. He's been here before. Behind this five car, trying to work his way around. Took his car a while to fire off on long run. Looks like they've improved the short run slightly here to allow him to attack here on the five, but also with Byron running fourth, he's a bit limited in being kind of held in position too. Right there in front of Blaney. Blaney can see it. He's wanting to try to gain as much ground as he can as quickly as possible. Look at that, high entry, low exit, driving across the racetrack. So many different ways to run through turns one and two for these drivers. Way up into the entry of turn three here. Just moving all over the place, trying to find speed. Christopher Bell, out of the race early, one of our championship four contenders. Dave's got him. Yep, he's here. Christopher, were you surprised with that brake issue, or were you driving the car in such a way that you knew it was possibly going to happen? Well, I mean, that was my first time I've ever exploded a rotor in my career. So, yeah, I, I was surprised, but, you know, I, early on in the race, I had a little bit of And uh, the second run, it just kept getting worse and worse. So, I, I don't know, just obviously a, a disappointing way to end, but super, super proud of, of this 20 team. All of our partners at DeWalt and Dream to be in the Final Four is uh, it's something that we're really proud of. And there was no sign of it yesterday in practice? Not from this, not from my standpoint in the car, no. How will you look back at this, Christopher? You're out so soon from a championship possibility. Yeah, I mean, it stings to not have the shot at the end of it. Obviously, we were all four really, really close, and, and we all four showed strengths at different times. So uh, I, I think it's going to be a great championship race, and whoever it is is going to be well-deserving. Thank you. I'm impressed. I, I can't imagine what the interview has to be like to give. He stood there. He answered multiple questions. Uh, looked right at the camera. I mean, I know it wasn't his year last year, and once again, disappointment this year. His talent is clear. Um, what he can do behind the wheel year in and year out, week in and week out, he's going to have his year, and I think treating an interview like that guy says a lot about who he is and his character. He'll be here again, and, and he is a he is a exceptionally talented race car driver. Had a frustrating year. Uh, but they rallied and had some really key moments, and he'll build on that. It's hard for him to see that today. Uh, but when he looks back at this in his career, he will recognize that it was part of the growing process, and it'll only make him tougher. The other championship four contenders, Byron again running fourth, Larson is sixth, and Blaney is seventh. You see the yellow line under their name. Those are the four drivers still fighting for the title. As we look back from Larson's HendrickCards.com onboard camera. We've seen Blaney put the pressure on Larson and now running different lines trying to find a way around. Larson's car has been great. You know, on the short run, 
not fantastic, but able to maintain. You know, if he gets the track position on the other other two championship contenders, I think he can keep it in a, in a short sprint. How have they helped this car on the long run? It's not been good the first couple of rounds through tires. Have they made the changes to try to keep this car where it needs to be? Issues right here with the two. Looks like the two of Cedric right. has made contact with the right rear. Right rear wall, look, or the wheel looks like it's about to come off yeah, on this he, two. I think he's got a broken toe link or the tire itself is trying to come off a little bit of contact there with the right rear. Let's see here, he's sideways, coming to the start finish line off turn four. Contact with the right rear. More contact right there. Just yes. trying real hard. You know, he struggled today, he did not have the speed. It's been a frustrating year. Just trying to make something happen and back in the car came around, smacked the wall, damage. Broke the toe link on that car. He's on pit road to get those repairs. And here's the 19 of Truex trying to get around Byron on the inside. Byron using that high line and the momentum to keep that position. Truex trying the shortest way around the track again. It gets to the door of the 24. But that to complete the pass as they go through the dog leg and down into turn one. Now he clears it. Byron lets him take that position down into the corner. And now the championship three or fifth, sixth, and seventh. And once again, Byron seems to be coming back to his competitors. Want to take a look at the Xfinity fastest lap. And William Byron turned it on lap three, completing a lap around this one mile oval and just over 129 miles per hour on average. Chastain still out in front. Then it's Harvick, Busher, Truex Jr., and William Byron, the first of the champ fours. We ride along with his Exalta onboard camera. The youngest of the playoff drivers, Parker. Yes, Rick, and I'd love to give you an update as to what the handling of that 24 car is, but William has been silent on the radio, and Jeff and Dale, I want your opinion on this, because I have this same tendency. You get back in traffic, you get focused on driving that race car, you go silent in there, not talking about it. Rudy Fugel told me he's been asking William to be more communicative in the race car throughout the stages, what's happening, instead of just dumping a bunch of information underneath a caution, and right now, as he falls back, and since he's been in traffic, after leading 93 laps, he has been absolutely silent on the radio, no information for Rudy Fugel to work with. So what were you guys like as a driver, silent or were you vocal? I wanted the crew chief to ask me what he wanted to know. I mean, I'm concentrating on driving this car the best I can. I want to run through this next corner as best as possible. I can't be thinking about what I need to share with my crew chief. I mean, ask me what you want to know. I will tell you, happily tell you how the car's driving, but I'm, I'm going to be solely focusing on trying to get the car around the racetrack, particularly as I'm losing ground and losing positions. I'm going to be trying to move around and find a better line to run. But I know I need to give my crew chief information, but I need him to sort of pry that out of me, ask me what he wants to know. Did you feel the stare, Jeff? Did you feel the stare from over here? Because I want to hear what he had to say to that, that, that question. Well, when I get my answer, there are a lot of crew chiefs going to stare as well. But, I, you know, I... I like to give the information because I wanted them to work on what I wanted them to work on. The key is not give too much information. They can only fix so much on a Sunday. You've got to decide what it is you need to be better, where it needs to be better. Give them that as the primary goal. I need this fixed. This I'm dealing with this other issue, but I can deal with that. I need this right here fixed if you want me to go faster. The 22 of Joey Logano, last year's champion, had this happened to him earlier. We just saw Cindric get into the wall and break a right rear toe link. Well, this is the 22, kind of straight up into the wall. That's the entry into three, uh, excuse me, into one, the flat end of the racetrack, pretty hard contact. And if you're saying, how did Cindric break the toe link and the 22 didn't, well, welcome to what the drivers and the teams wonder. It's just so, the angle of that right rear, if you hit it pretty flat, you got a chance. If you hit the front or the rear of the wheel, it kind of breaks that toe link. 22 still working his way around the track was running 14th when that happened but everyone chasing Ross Chastain now here at Phoenix.
fans, make sure to download the official app of NASCAR. You can follow the race action with free live scoring. There's also in-car cameras and a radio broadcast. You can also upgrade the premium access for driver audio channels, which, by the way, right now, the 12 audio is spectacular. Search NASCAR in your app store and start a free trial today. The champ four, yes, it started as four and down to three now as Christopher Bell the right front rotor exploded on that car, and he is now out of contention and out of the race. William Byron is the furthest forward of those championship four, with Larson right behind him, and Ryan Blaney behind Larson. And Blaney has been working diligently to try to get around this five of Kyle Larson, but has not been able to complete the pass. I feel like that if he could get by the five, he would drive right to the back bumper of the 24. And it's so frustrating because he probably knows that too. And Larson's not doing anything wrong. Larson is running the bottom of the racetrack. Now Blaney trying to get to the outside here. He's finally going to get there now. He's got great momentum down the front straightaway. In position to finally make this pass happen. Larson fighting back on the inside. Blaney has him where he wants him. He wants him now, though. Going to beat him on corner exit pretty easily. He, he actually kind of washed up on corner exit, had to lift. Thought he, was gonna, yeah, yeah. thought he was going to beat him as well pretty easily, but both cars kind of struggled on that exit there. But, so he's still right here on the outside, struggling to finish this off. He's like, man, I just got to get one good corner, and he's had two bad ones, allowing this five to hang around. Tries it again. And again, Blaney. Uh, probably has heard, maybe not, but two of his teammates, Austin Cedric and Logano, uh, both had gotten into the wall. Yeah, I would be surprised if they gave him that information, Rick. But you know, just to let you know, I think you know you would you would assume he talked about how loose his car was. We watched the battle for second place. Busher going around the four of Harvick, and just momentarily in the screen there is the one of Chastain, not too far ahead of these two. There's, a, there's the distance from first to second and third place. Busher now trying to roll that bottom of three and four and drive up there and catch Chastain and put the battle to that number one team. Looking forward from Harvick's Hunt Brothers Pizza right there on the front bumper as he watched Busher get by him, Marty. The long runs have been very kind, Rick, to Kevin Harvick today. Just a little bit too free, though, on this one. But he has not been out of the top five the entire day. And the longer he stays up here, Rick, you got to beg the question, could this really happen? Could Kevin Harvick win his final race? He finds some sports analogies, right? Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl and then retired. Jeff Gordon won his fourth to final race. But winning your final full-time Cup Series race, that would be uncharted territory. So Jeff he used to be Kevin Harvick's teammate. The longer he's in the mix today, do you get the sense the confidence just grows in that four camp? Oh, no question with Kevin Harvick. Uh, running well does provide confidence. However, Kevin Harvick does not lack confidence. And even though this is his final year, he has been in position multiple times to win races and just hadn't worked out. He came here. I asked him before the race, can you win it? He's like, yeah, I think we can. He said everything's had to go our way, but, but he had a lot of confidence even before the race started. I want to take a look at the progressive telemetry on Kevin Harvick. Shifting happening here. Right now he's in fourth gear as the brakes goes through the turn. Reaches down, grabs a gear, and then right away back into fourth. Think about the changes as Kevin Harvick has seen, the types of race cars he's driven at this racetrack. He's actually seen the racetrack change, the vehicles that he drives change, and no matter what, he still finds a way to always run well here. How about the change right now in lighting as far as you go from the sun beating down on the racetrack and right in your windshield as you're racing down the backstretch into turns three and four, and then all of a sudden you're in the shadows of the suites here at the racetrack. Yeah, right now that sun's not too bad of a problem, but as it gets lower and lower, just above that grandstands, it blinds you down the back straightaway. 
really can't see what's going on until it finally drops below the grandstands and the suites, and you can see the corner and aim for your marks. I used to, we used to qualify at this racetrack around 6 o'clock, 5.30, 6.30, and it was awful because it was right when that sun was at the worst possible position to be able to hit, hit your marks perfectly. And the drivers will have to deal with that somewhat today. You mentioned it about Ryan Blaney. He finally got by Kyle Erson and working his way up to the 24 of William Byron. It's been methodical. It didn't happen right away, but about a car length a lap, a car length and a half a lap. This 12 car, I think, is the best of the championship three remaining kids. And before he was able to get by, Larson was complaining about his car in traffic. Here's what he told the team. Uh, you're past the traffic all day like this. We got him last time. Just be patient here. We'll get him plenty of time. Well, only a better time before they get their cars better. And now Blaney trying to track down William Byron. Twice we've reported on him complaining about certain things. Despite those complaints still making headway. So again, are these complaints real or is maybe Ryan Blaney cracking a little bit under pressure? Oh, I think his complaints are real. Remember, he came in third, out seventh. So his frustration is he feels like he's done this work already. Right now he's doing the work again. And I do agree when he says they will get their cars better. You know, what he's saying is he has done this. He has been a race car driver for quite some time, and he knows every time he passes the 24, every time he passes the five, Kyle Larson sees what the 12 car is doing, and he says, all right, Cliff, I need my car to do X, Y, and Z to beat the 12. You don't want to keep showing your poker hand all day long. What you want to do is pass them and then keep the track position. These three continue to fight for spots as Byron holds the prime spot as far as the championship goes in front of Blaney and Larson. I think Blaney would love to run that high line, but his, the problem with that is the 24 is running it as well, and you can see how it takes air and grip away from the 12. He struggled on corner exit right there with the 24 in the same groove in front of him. It's forcing the 12 to run somewhere different on the racetrack, particularly when he gets close to the 24, he has to run lower, and he's not really been able to make ground on other cars that way. So he's almost lost a little bit of ground here to the 24, the 5 of Larson keeping it pretty steady in the distance he has to the 12 car. So we're at a little bit of a stalemate right here because that 24 is running that long run defensive high line. So again, Byron, Blaney, and Larson still fighting for a championship, but very unique to NASCAR racing is while the playoffs are going on and this championship battle continues, non-playoff drivers are out here fighting for a win and Chris Busher Kim is looking for his fourth win of the year, currently running in second. And how about Chris Buescher coming into this race? He just had one top 10 and 15 starts here. Despite that, when I talked to the team this morning, they were so confident about what they brought here this weekend. Buescher, just a tremendous 2023. Like you mentioned, those three wins. He's also got eight top five finishes, 16 top tens. All of those are career highs. Right now, he said the car's pretty stout. Just sees it freed up across the center. The drive off, though, Dave, for that car is great. Martin Truex Jr. started second, but then lost quite a few spots. He recently told his crew, you fixed the entry to the corner, which was too free, but now I need some front grip. Also, his spotter told him when William Byron was moving in on him, hey, the 24 is making some time on you. The driver radioed back, good for him, Parker. <laughs> well, a name you might have noticed in the top 10 from the start of this race and throughout stage two here has been the 43 of Eric Jones, a great run for this Legacy Motor Club team. And Eric and I spoke this morning. He said, this is the best car I've had in a low downforce configuration all year. He goes, I can't remember being this fast. The team just recently came on the radio and said on the long run, you're as good as the five and 24 ahead as he tries to hold off Keselowski there, Marty. Parker, talk about a team that could use a top 10 finish today. How about Daniel Suarez sitting just outside the top 10? A moment ago, had a whale of a battle with Brad Keselowski for that 10th position, and he came on the radio and told his team, listen, I just can't get back to the gas like those other guys can. Way too free at the end of the run. Only 18 laps remain in stage two. It's Chastain who's been out front already 51 laps today. Byron's led the most laps at 93, and he's currently leading the champ four contenders.
new leader in Phoenix as Busher has been able to take over the top spot from Ross Chastain. And down in the corner here, Gill in the lap car is going to go in the middle of the racetrack. It's going to run the one a little wider than I think he wanted to run. That's going to give some momentum to the 17. They battle down the front straightaway. Busher eventually taking the spot. And I wondered about this as he was driving through the field in stage one. If this guy goes up and takes the lead, think about all the what ifs, right? Had such a good run, went into the playoffs. That was a surprise, ran deeper into the playoffs than I think a lot of people expected. Then had a pretty bad rough round, and here's some contact as well on the racetrack. Yeah, contact with seven car right here. Great job by Corey to keep from wrecking that thing. And the six car of Keselowski, Chris Busher's teammate, he started dead last today. He has driven that car all the way into the top 10, running a ninth place, so RFK with a lot of speed. Blaney and Byron are battling here as they are actually running down the 19 of Truex. That's going to pre present some challenges to Byron. Can Blaney take advantage of it? Blaney lost a little bit of ground to the 24 here over the last couple of laps. 10 to go in the stage. Kim, what are we learning on the 12 car? Well, we're learning that he does not like that car at all. Here's what he most recently told the team. I'm not very good, dude. I'm way worse than last run. Set a turn, John. I need to lose here. You need to work on everything here. You're doing good here. Just nice and smooth here. So, Steve, as we approach the end of stage two and pit stops, when you hear your driver say we need to work on everything, what do you pick and choose to do on this stop? Well, this is what makes the job of a crew chief very difficult. It isn't listen to your driver. He says loose. You check box A. It says air pressure. You have to take that information from Ryan Blaney. He's not making it up. He says work on everything. That tells me he can't tell you which part of the corner is worse. They're all bad in their different ways. So now go look at your data could contact with your room back home. Where do they feel like they're losing the most? These are the decisions that will determine the championship. Jonathan Hassler has to make these decisions. He has to get his team together. What I do love that Jonathan has on his side is that man, Roger Penske. This is the most I've heard RP on the radio in any race. And I think Ryan, as we all know, short fuse, fiery temper. And the one person that I think naturally is going to defuse that is when RP's on the radio. I think that not even what he's saying. When he hears that voice, he goes, OK, this is a different race. There is more on the line. Roger's here in attendance on the radio. So I like that Jonathan, the crew chief, has the team owner on his side and on the radio. See Byron getting by the 19 of Truex. And I see a little difference as well in that 12 car. Just doesn't have the speed on the long run that he had earlier. Byron, though, on the other hand, lost a little ground to the top four, got passed by this 19 car earlier in the run, but now has ran him back down, got back by him, and he's driving away, or at least keeping this 12 at bay. That's got to build confidence behind the wheel of the 24. Why this matters, this is a 63-lap run, Junior. And when you look at that final stage, you're going to have about 65 laps on both sets of tires if it runs green. So back to that question by Kim, right? What do you adjust on? Well, short runs, long runs, this is kind of a, uh, We'll call it a dress rehearsal for what the final stage could be. The precursor of what that final stage will look like. And again, this one was broken up with a caution as we ride along with Blaney. Look at the handful he has. And you saw his right hand just in frustration, right? Just, ah, I got to get better. Here he is, still continuing to fight get on the outside. And he knows if he could have that rear grip, how much better he would be. But William Byron is saying the same thing. Oh. Either one is as good as they need to be. Blaney out of control on corner exit. You can just see the body language in how he's driving, the frustration over how this car drives. And he's still literally beating on the beating on the leg board of the of this seat because he can't do what he wants to do, and the car just won't produce the way it want, he wants it to produce in the corner. And then he'll lose that ground that he's losing right there. And then he'll take time, regroup, drive back to the back bumper of that 19 car, and then find them struggles again as he gets really, really close, lose that grip, lose that downforce that he needs. Slides up the racetrack behind the 19, under three laps to go now in stage two. Listen then, to how gentle he is on the throttle, Rick. How low he is right here. Yeah. Ooh. He can't wait to get this to the attention of his crew. 
make some changes. As frustrated as he is, I mean, he is still running six, and I think still faster than the 19 and the 24. Just finding a way around them and losing those positions on pit road and having to re, you know, do, go back to battle and pass them again, very frustrating in a race where you cannot have slow pit stops. Blaney started this race 15th. So back there further than his competitors and had to fight his way to get up into the top 10 and into that top six. But he doesn't want to lose spots on pit road. And right now, the white green flag about to come out for Chris Busher as he is on the final lap of stage two. So Busher has been impressive. Out front for 14 laps of this stage. Once he was able to get by Ross Chastain, looking for his second stage win this season. And as he comes out of four, it's Chris Busher that wins stage two. And after the top 10 across the start finish line, the caution will come out and these cars will make their way now to pit road so that they can get maybe some final adjustments. Again, they'll come to pit road, make those adjustments, and that battle still on. Three competitors still fighting for the title here. NBC Sports coverage of the NASCAR Cup Series Championship is brought to you by Sonic. Sonic. Credit One Bank, a credit card company. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Two stages complete. Championship weekend here at Phoenix Raceway. As some fans taking a different perspective of this racetrack. Here in the foothills, little mountains just off to the east of this racetrack as the cars getting ready to come to pit road. And right now, again with Busher and the win, he'll be first on to pit road. Chastain, Harvick, Byron, Trex Jr., Blaney, Larson, Wallace, Keselowski, and Eric Jones all top ten as now they're coming to you again, Kim. 
And no major complaints or changes for Chris Buescher. That stage two winner, he said there was a time it was insecure on entry, but overall pretty good. They'll take four fresh Goodyear tires, snow gold fuel. You see Ryan Blaney top right. He said it was back to what it was the first run. You saw that chassis adjustment. Loose entry, loose exit. Center turn is a great biggest problem, though, loose for them, Marty. Just like in stage one, Kyle Larson fell back to seventh. He said we lost a big chunk of rear grip at the end of the run. And he said the car just will not change directions in the corner like we need. Cliff Daniels taking a pretty big swing here, Parker. For William Byron, every time they've helped the long run, it's hurt the short run and made him too tight there. There'll be four Goodyear tires, Stoke no fuel. We'll see where he's able to join this. Picture's been on it. They're going to get him out second there from 2014. Big stop for Byron and Blaney able to gain a spot. Larson, three spots coming off of Pitt Road. So the champ four a little closer to the front as we get ready for that restart. What a beautiful setting for this championship weekend here in the Phoenix, Arizona area. You're out and enjoy the wildlife and the scenes. No better place than right here in Arizona. So many fans taking advantage of the campgrounds here outside Phoenix Raceway. Well, Sunday Night Football, Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills are in Cincinnati facing Joe Burrow and the Bengals. It all starts with Football Night in America at 7 p.m. Eastern, right after our coverage on NBC and Peacock. You see that, a sea of campers here in the campgrounds. Over 10,000 campers that started filing in on Monday to get ready for this weekend. I mentioned Josh Allen quarterback for the Bills and there's a tie with Josh Allen and William Byron as a matter of fact now when William Byron celebrates a win he wears those oversized caps and we've seen it numerous times as a matter of fact we've seen it six times this year where the oversized caps have come on he said well I watched Josh Allen on Thursday Night Football he was wearing the oversized cap I thought I'm going to do that for my celebration and so that is why William Byron wears those oversized caps in victory lane. So now it's down to three. Uh, started with championship four. Christopher Bell out on lap 109 with a mechanical issue. And William Byron, uh, with his great pit stop from his crew, has him out second. Currently running fourth, Kyle Larson and Ryan Blaney in fifth. Let's get another update from Pit Road and Kim. And Rick, for this 12 crew, a much better stop. The last stop, they lost four positions on pit road. This time, they gained a spot. The big question is, they're looking for the magic they had that second run. Did they make the right adjustments for Ryan Blaney? The other thing, Marty, keep their driver cool, calm, and collected. Kim, what a timely stop for Kyle Larson and his race team. They gained three spots here on pit road, proving once again why they're one of the three best pit crews here on pit road. And afterwards, Cliff Daniels went around to every pit crew member, shook their hand. Larson said, amazing job, guys. Parker? 
And for William Byron, it's been a championship performance by the driver, but it's been a championship performance by his pick through. The first stop, they kept him in the lead. The second one, they gained him a spot. And this latest one, they gained him two spots with potentially one more pit stop out left. Could this team be putting in the perfect performance they need to go up there and get this team a championship for their driver, William Byron? And once again, two by two, the Toyota Camry TRD official pace car for today's championship race has made its way back onto pit road. The field back in the hands of the one of Ross Chastain. William Byron is going to start on the outside. Yeah, both those cars, the Hendrick cars, took the outside. Blaney takes the inside. We'll have to see how this works out. It's going to be a wild restart. The final stage is underway of championship weekend. Ross Chastain leading the race. And right now, the 24 of William Byron leading the championship fight. Byron going on the outside of the 19, trying to stay in second in front of Martin Trex Jr. He has the momentum, but he can't quite clear him as they go into three. Blaney picks off the spot from the five of Larson in one and two. Larson battling back on the outside here. Larson lined up in the inside line where the control car of Chastain was, and it gave him that advantage on the launch to be able to beat the five through turns one and two. Just 118 laps remaining in this season. And this championship fight as Byron right now has the upper hand. Running in front of Blaney and Larson. Byron finally, finally cleared the 19 of Truex. Now can he chase down that one of Chastain? Chastain's been so fast of the last handful of laps here. Harvick after running up inside the top three the leading laps here has fallen back to the sixth position. Bubba Wallace is seventh, Keselowski eighth, Busher, who is leading in one stage two, is ninth right now with Eric Jones in tenth. You see what the 17 is back there in ninth. And that's every playoff driver's fear, right? He ran great in the stage, came down pit road, had a slow pit stop that cost you some spot. Then the restart, you lose a little bit more. And the stop wasn't awful, but 12.6 seconds in today's world. We heard Parker mention in the pre-race, nine to nine and a half seconds. That is what is acceptable to change four tires. 12.6 seconds, that's three seconds off. Under green, manageable. Under yellow, you lose a ton of spots. And he did just that. So Bush is now gonna fight back, see if he could gain some of those spots back. Teammate and Team owner Frank Kozlowski just in front of him right now has the eighth spot. Busher had a bad pit stop. Came out eight. He came in leading the race, came out eight, trying to make that back. Field spreading out as Busher still on the outside trying to get by that six, Kim. And on that Chris Buescher pit stop, the reason it was so slow, they had trouble on the right front getting the lug nut off. So definitely a slow stop there under caution. Yeah, those are the kind of mistakes that the championship guys are worried about, right? None of those guys have had horrible stops. Some have been a little better than others, but as this race winds down, Steve, we see many times it can boil down to pit stops. Oh, no doubt. I mean, that's why qualifying was so important. William Byron pit stall one of the championship four. All of that stuff adds up. You don't know what is going to be the difference maker. So you want to make sure you have every advantage as possible as we see three wide back here. It looked like two wide, but that's because the three of Austin Dillon was so low on the racetrack. The 48, Alex Bowman in the middle. What a year for the 48. This is going to be one they're going to want to put behind him. Missed some races with a broken back, sustained in a sprint car accident. I ran into him in the garage on Friday. He basically was like, look, you don't want to hang out with me. I have no luck. Anything but bad luck. If we're standing here, something could fall and hit us. Uh, so he was really looking forward to just finishing this year up. He still has belief in his team and in his talent. He's just looking for something to go his way, Dave. And Steve, he should believe in his team, especially they were the wall crew today. Not running where he wants to right now, but each time he's come down pit road, they picked him up three spots. So they're having a great day. Bowman and his teammate, Chase Elliott, both after missing races this year, missed the playoffs, and neither has been to victory lane. Chase Elliott trying to keep a streak alive. Once he had won in the Cup Series, he had won every single season after that. But you see Chase Elliott now running in the 22nd position. So 
Amazing how many cars are running really low. We, keep, we saw the three car, but as we saw that shot, some guys in one and two are as low as I've ever seen them running over there. Cars on the unconventional route there as we saw him cut the dog leg. We mentioned the fact that the four of Kevin Harvick retiring at season's end. A teammate of his, Eric Almarola, also has made the announcement he won't be back with Stuart Haas Racing or behind the wheel of the 10 at the end of the season, Parker. Right, we're retiring from full-time Cup Series competition for Eric Almarola here. And last week, he came so close to winning at Martinsville with a strong top five run. And as we watch this race go on, he has steadily been moving for that number 10 Ford and now knocking on the door of the top 10. And what a great way to end your time in the Cup Series if you can go out there and just get a solid top 10 on a run where he's moved forward throughout this race. Right now, just fight a little loose condition on the long run. But overall, a great run for Eric Almarola his last time here at Phoenix at number 10. Amarola running 13th, still up front. Ross Chastain has about a one-second cushion over championship four driver William Byron. Things heating up now in the championship battle as Blaney has got to the inside of Byron. Again, whichever one finishes in front of the other two now on the racetrack will be crowned the champion as Blaney has found something in this 12 car as he's been able to clear now William Byron and he takes that spot away. Yeah, the last half of the laps, this 12 car woke up, drove around the 19, a true exit now, drives up to the back bumper and around the 24 into second place. He was talking about how he didn't love the car the last run, needed to make some changes. They had heard everything. Looks like to me, they've actually improved this car over what we've seen all day long. Car really didn't have a ton of short run speed, really good long run speed, but here we are firing off well, Kim. And how do we know Blaney likes the car? He has said nothing on the radio, just completely focused on what he's doing on track. And when I talked to Ryan this morning, part of the prep he did for this weekend, he said he studied hours and hours of SMT data of the other three championship drivers to try and get a leg up on what
what they would do here at this racetrack. The question to me now is it's clear, as you point out, the short run speed is there. With a 100 laps to go in the race, one pit stop required, did they make the gains only to affect the short run or will it hurt the long run? A very interesting report from Kilm. Being able to study SMT data from other drivers, you can actually get the data from their car, where they're using the gas, where they're using the brakes, how much throttle input. And although you may not can drive the car just like that, it teaches you what they are looking for in their car, where they believe it's got to be the best to make lap time. Now the 19 is putting the 24 into a very difficult position, Parker. Well, Rick, I can tell why Steve was such a successful crew chief, because what he just said about how many laps to go and that there's another pit stop is exactly what the 24 team told William Byron. The second Ryan Blaney got around him, they said it's 101 laps to go, and we've still got another pit stop. Stay locked in. He has been absolutely silent on the radios. He focuses in trying to extract every bit of speed out of that 24 car. They, remember, they threw some adjustments at it to help it in the short run, and maybe that's just hurting at this portion of the run right now as he struggles to get like, back up the 12th, Dave. Parker, a few laps ago, Martin Truex said, I have a plan. I hope it works. He was running fifth. Car lengths behind the 24. He's found something there in the line, and the handling is there. He moves around him. Yeah, I wonder if the handling's kind of going away on this 24. Losing a little bit of ground now to the 19 of Truex as Truex kind of drives away in third place. There's Byron up the racetrack looking for balance. So it's slowly dropping back into the grips of Kyle Larson, his teammate, running in fifth, just ahead of the four of Harvick. So a couple more spots in jeopardy for this 24. Byron up the racetrack, moving around, trying to find grip and speed, trying to be able to click off the lap time as needed to maybe reel that 19 back in. I know that they have a lot of time. They have another pit stop, all of those things. But if it does go green, that's the concern for the driver when he sees the 12 of Blaney driving away. It's like, yeah, I, I, I know we got time to fix the car, but am I losing too much ground to the competitor for the championship? I think the real key, Steve, is not to get a lot of cars between you and the 12 car, because when you come down pit road, if you come down pit road in 10th, you got so many cars between you and he, you can't beat them off pit road unless they make a mistake. So even though he's driving away from you, you still have to fight hard to keep other guys from passing you, Kim. And Steve had a great question. Did they adjust on the 12th car to set it up for a good short run fire up, or did they set it up for the long run? Here's what Ryan said finally about the car. I'm playing a lot better here. Jonathan, I'll let you know where it goes. Still feel like I'm going to build a little bit free. So what is the car doing to give Ryan the indication that over the long run he feels like it's going to go free? Well, so if you look at where the 12th balance has swung, he's been a little tight in the middle, meaning the front won't change direction. But his real issue, as we rode on board lap after lap after lap, was those big corrections with the steering wheel on drive off, meaning he lost rear grip under power. So now he likes the car in the short run. Obviously, he's driven right up to second and is closing in on Chastain. He obviously can feel the back moving around a little bit, so we think he's going to build free. But look, you can't change that it's going to build free. That's what these cars do. You can change the severity of it, right? You can't turn the volume off completely. You just turn the volume down. Uh, what I really liked was that was a, the calmest we've heard Ryan Blaney on the radio yet today. And, you know, we heard Christopher Bell's sound earlier in this race before he had his issue about you had to peak at the right time of the season. This race is, is their whole season, so you also have to peak at the right time of this race. He is yeah, running down. Yeah, running down this one car of Chastain. I'm, I'm surprised and impressed by how the 12 has been able to drive through the field, through the top five, right up to the back bumper of the leader. This one car has been faster than everybody over the last 100 laps. Blaney told us how the team is in sync and those changes that they have been able to make throughout this race have put him into a position now that he's getting ready to fight for the lead here at Phoenix. Oh, that lap car cost him a little bit right there. Trying to get by Ty Dillon in the 77. The ability that this change has given this race car is for Blaney to drive it wherever he wants. One time he's on the bottom, the next time he's on the top, he's able to move around and 
that's really important because as he runs Ross Chastain down, Ross is going to see where Blaney's car is the best, and he's going to try to be in that lane. Well, Blaney can surprise him. His car is good enough to not have to be locked into one lane. He can go to the bottom or the top to make the pass. Blaney's family lineage has been involved in racing and sports uh, and has had great success from his grandfather who's a modified dirt track legend and Lou Blaney to his dad and uncle his dad Dave uh, such a standout sprint car driver as well as uh, one of the best when he got behind the wheel in NASCAR his uncle Dale actually was drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers back in 1986 in the fourth round he played at West Virginia was inducted into their Sports Hall of Fame. So Blaney, the family lineage, uh, has been involved in sports and especially racing for so long, but they've never been able to compete at this, the highest level, and fight for a championship like what they're seeing Ryan do today. Four tenths of a second separate Chastain and Blaney from the top spot. Blaney holding the top of the championship for advantage right now. Chastain continuing to make it difficult for Ryan Blaney as Blaney has got all the way up to his back bumper but cannot complete the pass for the lead Chastain holding on to it Blaney running second and it's Trex Jr. Byron and Larson in the top five. There you go a little bit of feedback from Ryan Blaney right there it's good just a reminder that you do not have to win the race to win the championship I know Blaney is trying to pass Chastain. Can't quite make out what he's saying there, but he's trying to pass the one of Chastain. Right now, it's what can the 24 and the 5 do to counteract the 12, right? They're in fourth and fifth, which seems good, but track position-wise, they're over three seconds behind the 12 car. So with 81 to go, you're inside your fuel window. Now it is, how much are you willing to gamble with everything on the line? Coming around lap 240 for green flag pit stops would be very early, but with over a second of tire fall off, you would make the 12 car stomach ache because if you're the 24 or the 5 and you pit while you do go down a lap, you will instantly be gaining over a second a lap. It only takes three or four laps and you'll cycle in front of the 12. So we're going to see which crew chief dares to gamble, Marty. 
Yeah, how much are you willing to gamble if you are Cliff Daniels, crew chief for Kyle Larson? And Steve, here's the other dilemma for the five team. They've been on every side of the balance today, but exactly right. Too free the first run, too tight the second run. Now too free on entry on this run. How fine is that line Cliff Daniels has to hit? And oh, by the way, when do they pit to your point, Steve? Well, so the problem about the balance, it's not the same for everyone. We talk a lot about speed, and I think the viewers understand cars are faster than others. Other cars are easier to drive, and yet again, other cars are easier to adjust on. Sometimes it's like a strike zone. It's big. Anywhere you throw the ball, it makes improvements. You can move it around left and right, make the car a little tight, a little loose. Other times, the strike zone is non-existent. Half a pound of air, and you go from loose to tight. Those razor edge cars, those are the ones you hate to have in a race like this, because now the decision Cliff Daniels have to make it's under a microscope. If he hops over the balance again, you know, that will be maybe the end for the five car. I mean, look at the 12. He was frustrated with his car. I'm sure he still doesn't love it, no running away. But great speed. Run the one completely down, only three tenths off the lead. Yeah, he ran him down, but he's not been able to pass him. Really loose getting in the corner right there. And he's gotten frustrated with Chastain. He feels like he's taking the air away from him. If he could get by him, he feels like he could could drive away from him, but Chastain is not going to give this lead up easily. We've seen Ryan's hand off the wheel multiple times in frustration, but I think he needs to remember what the goal is here. Stay in front of those other championship four guys. Junior, you mentioned the sun earlier as far as becoming a little bit of a nuisance, and it's getting lower on the skyline, and, but it's still above the grandstands and suites right now. So in the eyes of these drivers, with 76 laps still remaining. Seems yeah. as though Blaney's been able to catch Ross getting into the turns, but then Ross has been able to power away from him as they exit. Ross is running the high line that you, that you kind of prefer on the long run, and, and Blaney would like to be up there. I really don't see anything wrong with the one and what he's doing. I don't see him moving around, trying to drive in front of the 12 or take his air away. I see him running the same line every lap, almost. So um, I'm, I'm, you know, Blaney's frustration sort of surprises me a little bit, especially like he's in position right here to win this championship and closing in on one of the final pit stops of the day, if not the last one. And so their lap times have been so much better than Byron and Larson. I would, you know, I'd, I'd caution Brian to, that, hey man, you're y'all are driving away. If this stays, if this stays green, we're creating the advantage right now. Don't get too worked up about the one car. I know you want to get by him. But we're creating a great advantage for ourselves as this pit cycle might start under green flag. Just behind these two is Martin Trex Jr. Dave. Give you a little Toyota driver update with Truex, the highest running of all the Toyota drivers in the field right now, running third. Uh, that plan that he hoped would work was conserving the tires, running a little bit lighter so they'd have more tire at the end of the run. Not so sure it's worked out exactly how he wants to. He radioed in, said the rears are wearing pretty well on my 19 car, but so far, so good on the plan. He stays in third. He's been the fastest car by lap last couple of times around, guys. Well, that's something I love to hear, is the fact that, oh, here we go. First guy on pit road, Steve. 24 of the five chases and both Hendrick cars pit first. Now it comes down to the pit crew and the counter by the 12 of Blaney, Marty. These two cars all the way at the very end of pit road. Going to be a long pit road here for the Hendrick teammates. Kyle Larson said way too free on entry. And then he came on the radio about four or five laps ago, and he said, quote, not good. Cliff Daniels is going to have to take a big swing here to get his driver in the game. Time running out for Kyle Larson, Parker. Right, Marty, for the 2014 William Byron. He said something for the first time today. He was just too tight in the center. You see the adjustment there. Rudy Fugel came on the radio and told him not much longer. And then just a couple laps later, the 24 and the 5 were the first of the chip for the blink. They come on pit road, and he loses to the 5 car there on pit road. A huge leapfrog by the 5 of Kyle Larson to get out from behind his teammate, Ryan Blaney, on pit road, servicing his car. You see the long, tedious pit road, the longest of the series. You see the one in front of him right there, so close for Blaney. Checks up a little bit to make sure he doesn't speed. They're leaving pit road on the top right. You see the five and the 24 on the map. Here we go, no pit road speed on board with Blaney. As we look up, we're gonna see the 200 cars, the five and the 24 off in the distance. 
very well done by the team of the 12 car. They couldn't leapfrog the one for the win, but that's just a race win. You're right there, you hear him. Did they pit? He wants to know where they're at. You're good, Ryan. Everyone's pitted. That's, I'd be giving them the settle in 70 to go. This will be the longest run on tires of the day. Take care of your brakes. Don't be messing around with that one car if you don't have to. Kim. And just a slight adjustment for Brian Blaney. We heard earlier how he felt like the car was building free, but also said his turn down off two was starting to go away. I love it. You know, we talk about who's going to gamble. This is not new. This is what we've seen this year. The data, the information. You know, when I was down there in the pit box, it was you and maybe one other guy talking to your spotter, figuring out who's coming, and you'll miss a lap or two, and that could be a couple seconds. Not anymore. These teams have war rooms. They have so much help. It was clear that Blaney was just waiting for those 200 cars to pit. As soon as they came, the 1 and the 12 came the next lap around. Not wanting to lose too much of the advantage of these Goodyear tires. As a matter of fact, 75th anniversary celebration. Goodyear Eagles that they have for these guys today. And then on the left, let's talk about the cars that are still out there. Hamlin. The playoffs that could have been Briscoe, Stenhouse, Jr. So those three have yet to come to pit road. They're probably looking at running this right dead in the middle, try to get the best they can out of their tires or the gamble for these cars. If a caution comes out, there's only uh, 10 cars in the lead lap. So then Hamlet, Briscoe, and Stenhouse could pit, and the worst they're going to restart is 7th, 8th, 9th, or 8th, 9th, and 10th. Denny Hamlet a confidence this year that this was the year he was going to win a championship, but the problem with power steering in Miami Homestead, and he got into the wall, and it just was too deep of a hole to dig out of in the round of eight, wasn't able to advance to the championship four. Hamlin's out in front, Briscoe and Stenhouse Jr. still have to come to pit road. Chastain Blaney, Trex Jr., Larson, and Byron have all been to pit road. Chastain and Ryan Blaney still fighting for position right now it's not for the lead but 
That's just because Hamlin and Briscoe still have yet to come to pit road. They will have to do that shortly as we see Hamlin now on pit road. Parker. Right, it's been mostly a top 10 day for Denny Hamlin here. He'll take four good retires, a little tight. They went as far as Chris Gabehart could let him go here to split the stage basically in two. The 11 is away. We'll see where he rejoins. He was mostly in the top 10 before they went on this long strategy. I understand. He's going to back me all the way up to him. Oh, I got a nice exposure. Doing great. That's Ryan Blaney talking about the, the one. Feels like that the one is holding him up and it's going to back him up into a battle with the rest of the competition behind him, namely the five and 24 Byron. Lap times, though, would say different. The one and the, and the, tw and the 12 car both running just a little bit quicker, even two tenths that last lap and the championship contenders of Larson and Byron. And I, I would, you know, I think that the 12 would definitely drive by this one and drive away. Chastain's gonna make that nearly impossible. And I would caution, you know, would you caution Blaney's Latard not to burn his car up? Not to burn yeah, his car up trying to mess with this one. I do think what you point out about lap times are, are important, right? Blaney only sees what he sees out the windshield or out the mirror. Uh, and the five's kind of too far back that I think you can really locate him in the mirror. So you bring up some great information. Gap back to the five, whether it's growing or shrinking. Let him know what the urgency needs to be of passing the one. Uh, I think the mentality is you need to get by the one and win the race with 58 to go. But let's make the five come get us. Let's not burn our rear tires off and fall back to the five. I think he's better. I think if the 12 can catch the one in traffic or maybe a slip, he could drive by him, but to your point, Ross Chastain has proven uh, he's kind of taken over for Ryan Newman as the efficient driver who is just not going to give you the lane or the inch you need to get by. He's trying to win a race, and you said it earlier, well, he's not doing anything wrong. I don't think he's doing anything wrong either. He'll get the one and the win. Well, he has a header. Go get the spotter right there. It's Josh Williams. Yeah, you heard it. Go get the one and the win. Looks to the did. inside here. That was a pretty good little corner right there. Almost to the left rear quarter panel of Chastain. Now Chastain's moving around a little bit now to the bottom of the racetrack. What a masterful job <laughs> by Blaney. Not over driving the corner and just not happy. How you doing? Not happy. We didn't even need to hear the radio on that one. As now he's down on the apron, trying to make the pass on the one. Door to door as they come out of the turn. Inches apart for the lead here at Phoenix. This traffic right in front of them, Rick, could play a part. It's going to slow one of the cars down, be a disadvantage to one of the cars as they're side by side down the front straightaway. Blaney. I like this is where Blady has an advantage, though. He rolls the bottom so well. I just feel like that 51 of Newman going to play a role in this one way or another. Gonna dive out of the way there, try to allow these guys to race it out. Blaney to the bottom again. Chastain keeping the momentum up as he runs that higher line, and Blaney just can't stay on that left rear quarter Whoa. panel. Has to get out of the gas a bit. Wow, that was close. Alec is here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Blaney. Blaney into the, the back. back of the one. Here comes the 19. Martin Trex Jr., three wide for the lead. Chastain shooting back out in front, but Blaney now on the bottom of the racetrack, getting aggravated. Be smart here, man. Be smart. All right. Blaney's got a pretty good position on him in this corner. Be smart here, man. Be smart. Spotter letting him know, big picture, be smart. One, and oh, Blaney's in front. He takes the lead away from Chastain. Chastain trying to get back underneath him, though. I don't want to get smart with him here. Inside corner, inside. And Martin Trex Jr. might be the faster car of the three as he's closed the gap now. Almost contact for the 12 into the outside wall off of four. 51 laps remaining in the season and this championship hunt. That 19 right there is bothering that 12 just a little bit on entry there. Whoa, Blaney way loose. Big, yeah, big no, wobble. Be smart here. They're trying to talk Blaney down. 
They're too calm. They need to get on the radio <laughs> with authority. Ryan, here's the deal. Tell him what's going on with the guys behind him. Either, you know, don't that fight is what allowed the guys yeah, behind to potentially catch. And now he wants the gap back to the five. And I'll tell you, the gap is now under three seconds, about 2.2 seconds between Blaney. Three seconds out back. And there you go, Blaney and Larson. So now Blaney knows, to your point, what damage did he do to his tires? How much did he hurt his car? Did he take any speed out of it? These tires have only so much life. And when you slip, slide around like that, you could definitely shorten their lifespan on what could be the longest green flag run of the day on a set of tires. Now he's trying to settle in in third. There's the top three. Three seconds is the gap from Blaney back to his closest champ four competitor in Larson. Yeah, and last time by Larson, two tenths of a second quicker. Will it be the same this lap? Blaney comes by 29 20. Larson 29 20. They match lap times. Byron behind them, the quickest of the three by keep half a tenth. Digging, keep in the hunt. The 12 is melting down. Stay in the freaking hunt. He's only two ahead of you. <laughs> My man, Rudy Fugel, is scanning and he is selling. And I love it. The 12 is melting down. You know him. He can imagine it. I like that's a motivational radio right there. You can hear the excitement. I'm looking at him. That is a red face fired up Rudy Fugel. I believe that, you know, to, to Blaney's defense, everybody for years has driven home the idea that to win the championship today, you've got to win this race. And so, you know, he thinks that that, that is the only goal and the only way that he gets that championship today. He thinks that, and you are right. That's how it's always been. But what's the same between the one of Chastain and the five of Kyle Larson? They don't drive for the same owner, but they got the same manufacturer emblem on the hood. And that's what I see right here, right? This is a Chevrolet in Ross Chastain that was ridiculed of how he treated other Chevrolet cars back at Darlington in the spring. Rick Hendrick called him out. Ross Chastain isn't doing anything wrong, but he is not gonna help that blue oval Ford of Ryan Blaney clear and take the lead. Now, I think he's gonna race Truex the same way. I mean, this is how Ross races. He's been pretty consistent when he is this Ross. Now, some other weeks we kind of lost him and he disappeared on us, but now he's back to being the Ross that is here for Ross and Ross only. Yeah, and if you're Truex, think about the year you just had. You've won the regular season points, came in particularly potentially as the favorite and did not make this round to win a chance to have a chance to win a championship. So now there's a win out there in front of you. You are going to go get it. You're not, you don't feel like you're messing up Ryan Blaney. You passed him, you're driving away from him. Truex now underneath Ross. Under two seconds back to Kyle Larson now. Fight for the lead continues and that championship battle tightening up. And a lot of lap traffic. Larson's been in clean air. And that's going to allow him to continue to close as now Blaney and the leaders are running up on the back end of some pretty, you know, decent race cars. These won't be easy, slow cars to go by. One of the most popular driver in NASCAR in Chase Elliott. We but, saw the 16 of A.J. Allmendinger drop out of the fight here as he knows what's happening in front of him. The 12 of Blaney has closed the gap back now to the 19 of Martin Shrex Jr. And he's going to fight for second. What a battle. It is a heavyweight, toe-to-toe -to -toe trading punches. Slug fest between Blaney and Truex Jr. and Ross Chastain. Right now, Chastain leading as far as the rounds led. We'll see if he can stay out front, though. 42 to go from Phoenix.
for the lead. Blaney now almost contact with Chastain. Chastain. Caution has come out right in front of these drivers as they go into turn three. It's at the start finish line. And we see the eighth of Kyle Busch has spun around. That brings the caution out. And now, once again, these pit crews are going to have to go to work to try to keep this track position and potentially help their driver get out in front. This is so eerily similar to 2021. Kyle Larson was running third of the championship four. He came down pit road, leapfrog to the front, and it was the championship day for Kyle Larson. Will it match the same for somebody else? I say that because William Byron is now third of the championship four. He's in pit stall one. There are just so many similarities, adjustments, drivers. Everybody has to do their job, but the five over the wall crew, this is what it all comes down to. What happened to the eight here, guys? Yeah, we've heard drivers talk all day about how loose they are, and here it is. Eight car Bush just trying to be in the throttle. Back in just comes around. It came around quick. He didn't he he was in the throttle and it started around before he even lifted. It surprised him. He was you know, back to that back to that battle. Blaney gathered his composure, went and got true X, right? And now that puts a car between he, Larson, and Byron coming on pit road concepts up and down pit road are so interesting on how they put their crews together a lot of makeup of crew members who played professional sports football players we heard dave mention it earlier baseball players under a microscope now is this could potentially be the final pit stop to determine how the restart will happen and a championship on the line kim and pit crews have to be absolutely perfect. So do the drivers. Ryan said he fired off tight. They're free at the end. Just again, tight through the center of three and four. It will be a four tire stop for Ryan Blaney. Parker. And that top right of your screen, you'll see the leader, Ross Chastain, hit his pit stall. Just getting too tight on the X of the corners there. So he'll get four good your tires and fuel for there. Also, at the bottom right of your screen, William Byron will pit from the pit fifth position. Remember, he's had the fastest pit crew in all 2023. Can this be the stop that they nail it and get him back out front, Marty? Parker on the last caution flag stop. Kyle Larson team gained the three spots. We'll see if they can gain him a few spots here. He said he's too free on entry. There's a drag race off pit road. And we'll see if Larson was able to gain any spots over the 12. But look at that. Blaney holding serve in fifth. Two tire pit stop for Hamlin and Eric Jones. They're going to shake things up at the front because with two fresh tires compared to the four, that might stack things up as we get ready for the restart.
of the champ. Three remaining. Larson's team gets him out in front of the others. And so now Byron and Blaney will have to fight to try to clear that five if they want to win their first championship. Larson looking for championship number two. And it was a combination, Rick. Total time. Uh, you see it just over a second, but it was a little bit everywhere. Kyle Larson, a little bit better running his pit road lights, a little over a half a second faster than Blaney. Just driver time, just rolling pit road speed. And then the pit crew backed it up with another four tenths. We're not counting seconds anymore. We're counting tenths of a second, Kim. That's right, that stop not great for Ryan Blaney's crew. It looked good, but between the two tire stops we saw and then the fast stops from Hendrick, they lost four spots on pit road. Right now, the crew just trying to calm him down and keep him focused for these last laps, Marty. Kim coming down pit road, Kyle Larson told his team, let's do this, guys, and they delivered once again, just like they did in 2021. The stop before this, they gained him three spots, and this one, they gained him the critical spot he needed. He's ahead of William Byron and Ryan Blaney, Parker. And Marty, this is the caution that the 24 team wanted. Just a couple laps ago, they were trying to pump up their driver, William Byron, and told him we just need a caution, and we'll get them. They believe this car might be the fastest on the short run. The driver was so happy with the car, he asked for no adjustments. We'll see if that 24 can muster the speed here in the short run and get by his teammate in the five. All right, Jeff, Dale, what do you like? Two tires across the front row. They had to choose behind it. Larson chose the bottom, Chastain top, and then the championship cars split behind them. I like where Larson went with this front straight away where you can hang a left to the start finish line make it three wide four wide five wide i like the bottom you got two cars on two tires on the front row the control car of denny hamlin in the bottom trying to restart on old tires even an old left rear i give the advantage obviously to denny being able to get good drive not spin those rear tires i like that inside line as well watch ryan blaney how aggressive is he going to get is he the one that's going to try to make it four wide on the outside into turn one and they have to remember to stay in line until they get to the start finish line before they can veer out of the line that they are in green flag back in the air now just 31 laps to go larson did not get a good launch Three wide per second. Larson way down on the apron. Here comes the one of Chastain. Big momentum on the outside. Now, the 11 of Hamlin fighting back. Blaney on the outside of Byron back there takes that spot away. He's in a pretty good position right here if the five gets off this corner low and bottled up. Larson's got to clear these two guys. If not, they're going to be right on him behind from behind. Larson up the racetrack, and he slides up in front of the 11. The one way up against the wall. Larson trying to take the lead away. Blaney had to lift right there. The 24 takes that spot back away. Byron. Larson can't clear the one, but he's in front of the other two champ four contenders. Now a big run by the 12 of Blaney. He tries to go to the high side as the 24 of Byron way down cutting the dog leg. Blaney countered it, though, with a lot of entry speed to stay alongside him. Byron did a great job of shortcutting the front stretch. But Blaney is a good move. Oh, he's trying to block, trying to cut down on that 24 on entry. He knows, oh, he's finally clear. Cuts the front straightaway dog leg to try to close a little bit on that five and does. Byron looking on now, his competitors for the title in front of him. Larson really needed to get by Chastain on that restart, was not able to do it. Now he's got that dirty air from the one car. And here Blaney's comes coming. 12. Blaney now with the momentum. Gonna he's going to cut the dog leg. He goes all the way down onto the apron. Can he get to the side of the five? Almost to the inside, Rick. Right to the back bumper. Blaney looking very strong now. Under 27 laps to go. He got held up there by the five just a bit. That's allowing Byron to close the gap. Here comes the 24 of William Byron back into the picture. Blaney running higher in front of Byron. Here comes Busher back 
After a slower stop, he's going to try to gain some spots back. He looks to the inside now. He's going to make it hard on the 24. Blaney using that middle groove in three and four. It's really working for him to be able to close up on Larson. Going to try this higher side in one and two. Chastain pulling away. Almost a second advantage now over this championship battle between Larson, Blaney, and Byron. Blaney, middle of the track through three and four. The gap staying the same between the top two champ four contenders. Blaney now to the bottom of the racetrack. Just can't really make time on this five car. Larson doing an incredible job in his final few laps, matching the lap time. Hasn't really been able to do this all day long. We're seeing the best out of Kyle Larson when it matters. Two of the pillars of greatness of NASCAR. On the bottom of your screen with Rick Hendrick, owner of that five car, and Roger Penske, owner of the 12 car. Laney way up the racetrack, looking for any possible grip. Pretty big run off turn two, trying that. Any way around the five, Blaney now. That middle lane working for him. As Larson go block the top. We just saw Blaney make ground on him over here at the top. Nope, back to the bottom. Blaney's happy about that. Holds that clean air. Can he create the run he needs right here? So close. He's going to stay higher than Larson as Larson ducked back to that yellow line. Drifts up the racetrack right in front of the oh, 12. Wow. He gets a little loose. Larson, big loose right there. Now Blaney to the outside. Larson slides up the racetrack, trying to take the line away for the championship. Now less than 21 laps to go. Contact right there. Blaney, can he clear him? He does. Blaney and flare to Larson. And what does Larson do? How does he bring the fight back to this 12? He wants to jump on the right rear quarter panel as well. Try to take that line away. Three group here, still a long way to go. Nothing out back, you and him. Byron's a second back from these two. That 12 car just so good all weekend. Blaney pulls away from Larson. Now three tenths of a second to gap between these two. And Chastain has put two seconds between himself and Blaney. I did like that radio though, a long way to go. This battle has been epic, but there's still 19 laps, 19 miles. The cars will continue to change. The brakes will fade. Tires will heat up. There's confidence in that five car. You got one of the greatest, if not the greatest, current race car driver behind the wheel. Now he has something to chase. He'll move around. He'll try to find speed. He'll find it, too. Look, throttling up hard through the middle of the corner, trying to get to the left rear of the 12. It's not over yet. He's trying really hard to get to the inside of Blaney because Blaney likes that turn down off a of two. That's where he's got speed. If he could get next to him, it would prevent Blaney from doing that. Take his advantage away from him. Blaney changes his line, shows him something different. The gap's still there, about two to three car lengths between Blaney and Larson. Larson learning, watching what that 12 of Blaney is doing, trying to find a weakness if there is one. He's been able to hang right there. Blaney's not been able to drive away from Larson. Great exit, though, there for the 12 off of that corner. Back into the shadows again. And now, only 15 laps to go.
Chastain is pulled away. 2.1 seconds in front of Blaney. But right now, Blaney's got to be thinking big picture. The championship is keeping the five behind him. Larson seeing the championship pull away from him. Meanwhile, right behind these cars, you'll see it right there. William Byron right in front of the 17 of Busher and Truex. Just not able to make the lap time that these other two of Blaney and Larson are making to run them down. That's got to be so frustrating after really having a great car all day long. And it fell perfectly for William Byron with the caution coming out when it did. His pit crew in stall one. It had worked the previous three years. The person winning the poll and getting that first stall has been able to win the championship. But it might not happen this year for William Byron as he runs in the fourth position, and he is third of the championship four contenders. Kyle Larson is tasked with trying to run down a faster race car than his. He's being asked to try to make the car that he has do something that the one in front of him won't or will do. It's one of the most impressive things about racing, the 12 almost into the wall, maybe into the wall off of turn four there, but how incredible to watch one, you know, these great, incredible race car drivers under these conditions. This is what we wait for all season long. And here we are with an incredible drive between both of these drivers. Did a great job of defining what Kyle Larson's role is right here. What is Blaney's? Right, is Blaney's role to maximize everything in his car with a with a lead over Larson, or is it to hey be smart? We can win this championship by just finishing a little bit ahead of Larson. We don't need you pushing it to make a mistake. If you, if I'm on the box to Ryan Blaney, I'm telling him to go. I want him in his race rhythm. I want him in speed rhythm. That's where he's comfortable. That's where I want to put him. If he makes a mistake doing it, so be it. You've got to put him in the position he's most comfortable, and that's attacking. Less than 10 to go. Chastain, 1.7 seconds now. Blaney's closing in. Larson falling back. Larson a little bit quicker, half a tenth quicker that last lap. Now nine to go. With the laps winding down, Larson's got to put a push together right now if he wants to catch and get by that 12 of Blaney. Larson gets in that situation where we see a quarterback in football trying to put a pass into a place that doesn't belong and throw an interception. That's a position Larson is being put in right now. He's got to find some speed that the car doesn't have. And when you do that, it's very easy to overstep your bounds, get the car in the wall, spin the thing out, but it's time to go. Blaney continuing to run that high line. Rick Hendrick watches on. That time by Blaney, a tenth quicker than Larson. Both drivers faster than Chastain. Busher still right on the back bumper of William Byron. Blaney, Larson, and Byron running second, third, and fourth. The title right now in the hands of Blaney. Can he keep it in his hands? 24, way up the racetrack, allowing Busher to get underneath him. The other big mile marker on the screen, Kevin Harvick is running seventh right now. Remember that streak of top 10 finishes still alive for Harvick. He can increase that number. It's at 20. He's looking to make it 21. Most, one of the more incredible stats in, in our sport, 20 top 10s in a row, or 20, yeah, it's, it's incredible to be able to extend that streak, and it looks like it's possible today. Into the sun, and through three and four, Blaney still chasing after Chastain, and he's closed the gap to 1.4 seconds. Again, faster than Larson. The last two laps. Right, Blaney, I want two more. 
lats with you pushing hard, and then I'm going to back him down a touch. Not a lot. Doesn't have a lot of room to give up. Brad Kozlowski, I think, made a little bit of wall contact. Did some damage on the sixth car. He's able to keep it going. Looks like all four tires still have air in them. He'll be able to nurse this home. Should stay under green flag conditions. Under four laps to go. Blaney still with a sizable advantage over Larson. 1.4 seconds separating Chastain and Blaney for the race win. Every person on this team, on this 12 team, is hoping nothing happens. No yellows, no issues in these final couple corners. Ross Chastain wanting to end on a high note this season as he's out front by a second and a half, looking for his fourth career win. And an impressive run for Chastain today. He's already led 154 laps. This is 155 as he has just two laps to go. And that's something you can stay focused on in the offseason. If we can get to that championship four like we were a year ago, what would that win have meant? And you have to believe to your point, Jeff Burton, that 12 car of Blaney has backed it off just a touch with only a couple corners left. 1.4 seconds separating one and two, and about the same, separating Blaney from Larson. Now, one lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. White flag, one more. Chastain looking for the race win. Blaney looking for a championship. Chastain down the back stretch for the final time. Blaney is going to run in his tire tracks. You know, winning is in his family's DNA, and Ryan has just crested the mountain of all wins. Ryan Blaney is a NASCAR Cup Series champion. Oh, man. Thank you, guys, man. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting emotional. Thank you, guys, man. What an awesome year, man. Thank you so much. Can't wait to celebrate with you guys. RP, congrats. Thanks for giving me a shot. Hell of a job, driver. Proud of you for sticking with it all year. Way to go, Team 12. Congrats, Jonathan, everybody. You all deserve it, man. So cool. What a hell of a job, man. What a hell of a job. Great job. Thank do. Congratulations, buddy. Great job, you, Jonathan, the entire team. 2023 NASCAR Cup Series champion. I appreciate it, man. Run over, get your flag. Come on out, celebrate. Start finish line for us, buddy. Great job, team. The respect of his peers being shown right now. For the first time in a decade, the champion didn't end up winning the race. Ross Chastain is going to claim that win. But winning the bigger battle, Ryan Blaney now has his championship flag, and he will do a lap here to enjoy what the fans are so appreciative of today. The driving that he put on. not going to survive this burnout.
He'll unstrap and climb out of the car and listen to the crowd. The flag barely survived the burnout. The car barely survived the burnout as well. Almost wall contact, almost a fire as well. That belongs to you as a Cup Series champion, Ryan Blaney. Boy, a rough pit stop. You somehow put the team on your shoulders. An incredible battle with Kyle Larson. What did you say to yourself before that final restart, Ryan? Well, it was just time to go to work. You know, I mean, we. Did a good job of getting where we need to be, and those guys had two good pit stops, so just, just need to go to work. And, uh, you know, hoping our car was good enough, which it was. So just so proud of this team. What an unbelievable year. What an unbelievable playoffs for us. Uh, to win back-to-back -back cup titles for Mr. Penske, that's so special. And to have my family here winning my first cup title, I got emotional in the car. I'm not a very emotional guy, but uh, so cool. Thank you guys for coming. I hope it was an awesome show. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, Appreciate Menards, Dutch Boy, Ford, um, you know, Worth, Advanced Auto Parts, Body Armor, Dex Imaging, Knopf, uh, Cap Gemini, Wabash. Everybody makes this possible. John Menards here. So that's uh, so cool to get him a championship and can't wait to celebrate with my guys. We could hear all the emotion on the radio, Ryan. What was going through your mind on those final few laps? No yellow. <laughs> Didn't want a caution and uh, Dude, once I, I got to the white, you know, felt pretty good about it. It's just about getting there and finishing it off. So, yeah, I just didn't want to yellow. Luckily, uh, everyone kept it straight, and we were going uh, going good. But I uh, I want to shout out also uh, Kyle and William. That was fun racing those guys all day and the, and the 20 bell. Um, unfortunately, he broke. But racing those two guys at the end there, uh, racing clean, uh, that's what that's what racing's all about. So uh, that was a lot of fun. Mid-season, maybe even early in the playoffs. How improbable did this championship seem, Ryan? Well, you never want to cut yourself out, you know. I mean, um, I think in the summer, you know, we were we were struggling a little bit, but we never gave up, and we just went to work. And I've said that all week. Like, we just this group goes to work, and they figure out problems. That's why they're such an amazing group to be with, with the, the Team Pesky folks, because uh, they they just put their head down and. and do the work and accept the challenge and that's what they did so it's not happenstance we started running so good during the playoffs it was a lot of hard work by a lot of others in the air and ryan blaney uh, when he wins like at martinsville who normally hand the checkered flag to a fan in the crowd he doesn't end up winning the race but he wins the championship and what a season he has put together again martinsville one to get into the championship four three wins on the season but the most important was finishing in front of kyle larson and william byron at the end of this one ryan blaney is the 2023 nascar cup series champion